on to that show. You know, you hold on to these shows like they're the grail. And then you got, but when the Chappelle show's on, when you flip through and you go to Comedy Chappelle Central. Show. Yeah. Chappelle show. There is never boop, boop, one. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the show. Down, 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 down. <laughs> and like, anytime you hear that, you're just instantly 100% in. Like, we watched a marathon. Mm-hmm. It was like a couple weeks back, like a month ago. All of them. They're still like the funniest shit to be on TV. Yo, they shouldn't even be allowed to be on TV nope. nowadays. No, dude. Absolutely. Not. <laughs> when you watch that shit, it's just like, how do they even let this back on TV? But, but then you got South Park out there. Yeah, South Park. South Park. Bad. Dude. Yo, they are ruthless on South Park. I hear people talk about it doesn't matter what. How's time, South Park even on there? I though? don't know. See, that's what I don't get. Why can you you can't cuss on some things and then you watch South Park? You're like, what? Who is even letting Bro, this? Bro, they had Martha Stewart eating a turkey through her asshole. <laughs> no, they, she, had, they, she had, had like, they had it's the whole turkey. No, they had Oprah um um uh ass and vagina talking. Remember that? That's what I'm saying. And then like, they had uh, they had the the gay. What's that guy? What's the guy do? What's the guy's name? Mr. Garrison. Um, no, no, no. His his uh, his uh, his guy. As I don't know. It's uh, whatever they call him. You know, he's oh, Mr. Mr. Han? Slave. Mr. Slave. I thought it was Mr. Hand. No, Mr. Slave. The guy that the, the uh, with the black uh, leather pants. Mr. Slave. I, I and then he jumped on much. top of uh. Hey, what's her name? The Hilton, the girl Paris Hilton, jumped on her and ate her through her butthole. Like crazy stuff, That's bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, how is that even on TV? And it's like one of the <laughs> longest, like, it yeah, been... it's long. It's been like 23, 23 Dude, seasons or something. Like we that. started watching that. I'm, I'm about to turn 35 mm-hmm. this year. We were watching that when we were in middle school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I've been out of high school for well over 10 years. Yeah. 15, I think. And that's, but you know why? You know the thing is, is have you noticed the Simpsons, uh, Family Guy, and South Park are like the longest running like cartoon oh, shows yeah. that people still watch? But I'm just gonna say this right now and get it right out of the way: that Rick and Morty will take the reign when it's said and done. Maybe not on the Simpsons. No, you know why? Because they, gotta they don't pump make them. enough. Yeah, they don't make enough episodes. Did you see the deal they signed? Yeah, it's but, like another seventy something episodes. Yeah, they're taking too long to pump them things out though. They're so good though. They are, but they're taking too long. It is. I hate the break. You can't break like that. But you, it's if it's you so ever notice, hard, like you it's ever so hard to Simpsons, make those. None of them are breaking like that. They just boom, yeah, boom. but it's easy to make that. And they like, pumping them out though. Th- that shit ain't easy to no, make. Not, what they're doing, not what they're doing, because they have to have so much. Uh, uh, detail and stuff. Everything the, in the background yeah, means something. Yeah, it's just so much like that they're doing. Like they gotta have like a real story. It's the like, smartest cart. Well, one of the smartest cartoons. Yeah, but that's out. a lot of work, you know, for that kind of cartoon. Even though it's really good, it's, I, that's why I see why it's only at what is it? Season three, four, four, four. Yeah, like season four. Come on now, y'all gotta pump this out. Wait, that's it's that. good though. It's well, real good. we we started the show already. So um, welcome to show. another episode of Bernie Dag Podcast. I got a really special guest here today. Is a friend of mine and somebody I work with once in a while actually he deals with me when he wants to because uh you know he's a busy guy so this is uh Jamel Fleming he is a retired NFL player which you don't look old enough to be retired but right. I mean no, well, that's no, that's a that's a blessing though no NFL player looks old enough to be retired that's good though yeah. like if you get out and even Tom Brady right now if he retires from football which would be Dude, 20 some years right would still yeah I mean he's still <laughs> if he said he was retired That is hilarious. Like, how is this even working? That's bullshit. I didn't even have a phone number. <laughs> I shut the cellular data off. And it still did it. So yeah, so you're <sighs> retired from the NFL. You uh, how long have you been retired from the NFL? Shoot, it's been a couple years, three maybe. Three years. Three, four years. I mean, I could still hopefully go back. I mean, I would still go back if you know if they called me. It's hard though. League is the NFL's it's a different animal. It's not like NBA. Hockey, baseball, nothing like that, you know. They just it's just a revolving door. Yeah. You got your Aaron Rodgers and then everybody else, you know, oh oh he has one receiver. Yeah, that's good too. But everybody else, who who are they? You know what I mean? And it's just a big revolving door in the league. The league, that's the only thing I don't like, is that they're, you know, having to make making it a big revolving door with mm-hmm. players and stuff. Cause you know, the fans, you can't, you know, back in the day, you knew everybody on the team. Yeah. You know? Now what? You can't even who who plays for the Cardinals? 
You tell me. Can you, can you name the players that play for I the can't. I, 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 could, I couldn't <laughs> name more than two. Yeah, I mean, you could get – I mean, let's be real. Even if I you can were, name the quarterback and a wide receiver. That's about all I'm giving me, you. <clears throat> I mean, be realistic. You probably name me 10 players. That's about it. 10 out of a 53-man roster. You know what I mean? And you live here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And so that's the only thing I don't like is that they do that. Because, you know, the fans don't get a, you know, um, a good feel for the team. They don't know – you know, the team's going to be good or not. Every year's a surprise. You're like, oh, we're going to be good. I don't know. We could be. We might be pretty good. We might be better. In so. a way, though, I mean, you see some of the older retired NFL players that mm-hmm. really did stay in the league for a long time and get banged up, mm-hmm. and they don't look so hot now, some of them. They look pretty rough. Like they their bodies do. are taking it hard. They do, but everybody's body gets kind of, you know, old. You know what I mean? Like they played for, you know, a lot of years and I mean they did wear down but I don't know it's it's still like they they have a mystique about them though that they because they played that long yeah they're like, legends you, yeah you know what I mean they're you legends. still know them when they walk around and when that's you see that dude stiff walking you're like oh that's yeah, yeah that's I mean in right the there. league now I mean you see how Gronk just retired randomly um you see how uh Luke Keekley just retired last week or whatever I think Eli yeah, announced Eli, last Eli, night or Eli, today yeah. but I mean Eli uh, I mean he got two Super Bowls he played long yeah, enough. Absolutely. And then, uh, um, but I mean, just like young guys, like Calvin Johnson retired. That mm-hmm. was a shocker. You know, um, who else retired? Oh, Andrew Luck retired this year or 2019. Yeah, that's a that, that was, was a big crazy. one. Yeah. I mean, think about that. Like, how are they retiring so random? You know what I mean? Like, He, that's he just, signed a couple good contracts. He did, so. he did, he did get paid, though. But uh, um, that's the thing, you know, with the NFL is like, they're paying good now, though. So that's, that's nice. But uh, the only thing we need to change is... Is a uh, lifetime uh, health insurance. Yeah, I will tell you that. Well, because we keep finding new stuff out, and yeah. that's that's tough. Because like you know, they clear you mm-hmm. when you leave, right? I'm guessing when yeah. you, when you, you leave the league, they probably make sure that you're not something's not terrible, or you oh, make sure of that. Yeah, they kick. Uh, uh, Maybe not. They probably don't. Uh, but they do have insurance for a while, so probably like five to ten but, years. When a lot of this stuff's not setting until 10, 15 years down the road and it's getting serious. Yeah, you won't know anything anyways until like you're 50. You know and what I mean? The brain's the big one. Yeah, you know, and then, and then, and just normal people are gonna, you know, are gonna get uh, dementia, all that stuff mm-hmm. anyways, right? Just, just normal people. Just, just think if you had trauma to your brain, right? How fast that, you know, that's gonna set on you. So that's the only thing about health insurance that I would still change the next CBA um, just because you should be taken care of because baseball does it basketball does it mm-hmm. and they don't get hit in the head <laughs> no and you guys are you guys are pulling a bigger draw oh way bigger draw like, plus I mean I'm in, telling you right now we don't have parties for baseball every single weekend no. you know we just don't and like this is a house that we don't even get to watch we're from New England so we watch the Patriots mm-hmm. we only get to watch them once in a while right. on TV and we're still having people over every Sunday to do a cookout and all that stuff. So I mean, it's yeah, it's way bigger. You're not getting that. Yeah, there's no way. No. So that's that's the only thing I wish they would do. You know, change just because that you know the safety of your players. You know, you can't preach the safety of your players, but then, oh well, they don't play anymore. So we'll just you know we're not going to give you any. You know, you have insurance yeah. for a little bit, and that's about. I mean, that, you're talking about Tom Brady, anybody. They're only going to get it for a span, and then that's it. You know. Um, so God, that's one thing I would say would change. Scary. Yeah, that's. I mean, you got to think about it, Terry. You know, Terry ACL. You know, dislocated uh-huh. shoulder. And I mean, your knees are the biggest thing, is because you know getting knee replacements and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, other than that, I wish they would just change that because that. I don't know. Like you can't preach about that and then you don't give health insurance. Like that's kind of. Yeah, <laughs> it's like what. And I'm not trying to hear. You know, you start with the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, man. State Farm building, bro. Mm-hmm. You gotta make sure we got insurance for life. <laughs> this is bullshit right it now. It's just marketing, man. It's just marketing. Like, man. Come on, what, we had a great idea to market when State Farm bought that building. Are you talking about that run? That run would have worked. I still say it to this day because nobody's done it. Like nobody has done it. And at the time, you're right. This whole viral bullshit was getting like really big. Everybody was trying to figure out what the next challenge was. Everything's still viral, right? Yeah, now, but though. the challenge thing kind of died down. At the time, yeah. the challenges were high. I had an idea that Jamel and I at the time, State Farm just bought. The Cardinal Stadium should do. I think what was it for mental health or something like that? Mm-hmm. I wanted to do it, and we we're gonna do a stadium run, and we we're gonna go to the Cardinal Stadium, and we we're gonna run around the stadium and post our time that it took us to do a full run around the stadium, and then we we're gonna try to get State Farm on board for mental health because right. I thought it would be a cool idea, but I'm lazy and I didn't want to run, so 
And I don't want Jamel to show me up on camera. So oh, the, my you know, goodness. No, that would have been cool if we would have just did some. I mean, you can still do that. We now, could still though. do it. Yes, it's, it's everything's still, you know, they're still Cardinals need good viral. publicity. Yeah, right. Right. right? <laughs> They'd like yeah, that. They would love that. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, you know, um, just, that's the only thing really with football that you should, you know, I feel like they should change like like that because that's that's huge you know what i mean that's like after football is a lot longer too like you, even if you play 20 years <laughs> 20 years what other job are you, you know? doing like getting there's not too many of them out there mm-hmm. and i mean even the military when you leave the military same exact thing they make sure that you have something it might not be the greatest but they make sure there's something that's covering you because they know yeah they know all those little grenades you're throwing in there even during drills that percussion that runs through your body yeah. is i mean that's crazy. You ever heard when they throw the like a flash grenade or whatever in a room oh. and they yell fire in the hole? You know why they yell that? Why? It's not for the people out there. Or it's for their guys to open their mouths because when the percussion goes, the air has to release through your body somewhere. Oh, and wow. if you do not have your you know, jaw open or whatever right. placed, that air expands in your body and it can like kill you. Right. And it could just make your lungs mush that's crazy and that's what it was how it was explained to me so i didn't know that <laughs> but then i got thinking about it, like so wait a minute wow. just the air releases but you're still getting that percussion that's so big to your bodies of that course. if that air was in there to vaporize your lungs mm-hmm. and you do that multiple over, times over. you know you got to be covered yeah. you got to have something you gotta have something so the you... wife the kid somebody you know what i mean like <laughs> dude i never ever have hit somebody even half as hard with my head mm-hmm. even protected right you know i've crashed dirt bikes and stuff and hit trees and mm-hmm. but not anywhere near that extent and that's scary right. to think that you're doing it play after play after you play know what i think we should do um because i was talking to somebody about this because they think like oh well you just run and tackle and i'm like hold on i, I don't think y'all been on a football field and that's the thing most people you're not it's not like basketball where you're courtside you know so you can actually see how tall the guys are mm-hmm. you know what i mean um, so football, you're, you're a distance away, right? I think if they were on the field and they got to see somebody get hit on the sideline, that whole oh, mind yeah. would change about football. They'd be like, holy cow. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you watch it on TV and you see someone get wiped out and then everybody like parts, parts like the most, like right, the Red Sea, you feel me? Like, yeah. Because everybody gets out the way because them, like, it's, they're running full speed. So just think you run a full speed and somebody else run a full speed and they, and y'all collide into each other. I mean. And not normal people running full speed. No, and you guys are like normal. No. peak. You're running right. full speed. Like, that's speed that I can't run. You know what? I don't know. If and you have weight really, behind it. I don't know if people really can just. I, that's why I was like, man, if they were really on the sideline, I think everybody would have like a, a different outlook on football. And mm-hmm. then they can really see that that collision. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, you you can't really, you can kind of hear it on TV when someone gets hit, you know, from because they have the little uh, mics on the on the ground. But you haven't really heard it from like, on the field, like it's crazy. Like when someone's oh. running and they get hit on the sideline, it's like boom, and because they in the helmet, like the the cracking of the helmet, mm-hmm. it's, it's crazy. So how's your? Does that ever bother your ears? You ever get the ringing? Not even just um, from not from a concussion, no. just from such a loud bang off that helmet. Yo, when you get hit though, like in the ear, no, that yeah, oh yeah, like especially to hit you right in the ear hole because yeah, it, it like uh, rattles right there in your ear, and it's like, oh man, but. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I wish I think people should I think they should make it where get like uh, that's like gonna be like the new thing. It's First step, where... go sit go sit ringside at a UFC fight or even just an MMA fight. I've been to a boxing one. No, no, no. Go M- MMA. When you watch two heavyweights and they're from here to where that room mm-hmm. is outside this door. And the cage is the only thing separating you from them. And when you feel the first two hits, like yeah. hit the bodies, and you feel like it's their hands, yeah. and you feel it in your body, and you're just like, that's what I'm saying. Holy that's what I was like. Shit, that's dude. kind of like and the that's, feeling. That's kind of like the feeling. But it's even more intense yeah. on that field because you guys well, are protected. Well, because like you so actually running. see them too. Like remember, they run like when somebody gets hit too on the sideline. I know you seen a cheerleader get wiped out, and you know a mm-hmm. camera guy. They knocked out. the ref out yeah, last I weekend. Yeah, I mean you seen it. Like it's like boom. What the. <laughs> And it happens so fast. And, you then, and that's what I'm way. saying. Think about why how everybody gets keep getting smacked on the sideline. Because they think, oh, it's gonna be okay. And then the dude comes flying off the and they don't have any time and the chili gets wiped out and the camera guy and the, the coach and stuff. Because everybody's just sitting there like, oh, they're gonna be all right. And then it just happens like in an instant where you cannot move quick enough to get out the way. And that's why everybody gets, you know, just oh, yeah, the field's on the not sideline. big enough sometimes. No, they keep thinking because everybody thinks like, oh, it's not big. Yeah, like professionals, you can stop. Like, nah, like, dude, oh, nah. no, dude, it's like sometimes it's like 500 pounds yeah. plus. But they fly of too. Motion it's like that you got, has to stop. To, yeah, you're trying to catch somebody running full speed, and then like say they jump into your arms, like, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not going to happen. So. How did you get started in football? Man, my dad's a football coach for high school, high school football coach. He's been not coaching football for, shoot, as long as I've been alive. In so, Texas? Yeah, in Texas. He just retired in Texas uh, last year, and they moved to Oklahoma, and they teach and uh, coach over there now. But yeah, they they were like uh, he's been he's been coaching yeah since forever. I mean, and then um, so I've been around football my whole entire life since I was a little baby. So I saw I've been going to practices and and doing all that. Like my life was football, like growing up. And then we didn't have like social media like we did like nowadays. Right. So I mean, we had like some cartoons on TV, and then go with my dad to you know uh, football practice every day. So I grew up you know literally just playing football all day every day. You know and at school, whatever, and then my dad let me start playing. And I played every sport, too. I played baseball, basketball, ran track, all that stuff. So, because, um, you know, my dad's coach, so, you know, we'll go to the basketball games. You know, when you in high school, they'll coach football, basketball, and then track mm-hmm. every year. That's how they do it. So I go to football during football season, basketball during basketball season, and then the track meets, you know, during track season. So that's how I grew up. Um, and then, you know, I just got better at football. Um, plus, I liked football a lot. I did, I don't know what it was. It I don't know if it was the team and the camaraderie, or you know, and then the physicality of it. Um, plus, basketball, you have to really be good at shooting. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you, you can't just be like okay at shooting. Even you know more I mean? so now. Yeah, you just can't. The landscape changed again a yeah, couple years ago, so it, it's even worse. And that's that's what I learned with basketball. Seven footers got to like, hit threes now. You got hey, you got to make them buckets. Like if you ain't getting buckets, you're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Or you got to be, you know, seven foot tall. You know, one of the two. Like, either you got to be that tall or you have to be um, be able to get your own shot. So, you know, that was a little tough for me, especially when, like, you know, one six eight. you know. So right. I was like, nah, I'm going to go play football. So Were you big, though, as a kid? No, really little, actually. I have a, I'm a, I have actually I have a twin sister. She was actually bigger than me till like, probably, like, seventh grade. And then, uh, but I was always quick, fast, mm-hmm. athletic. Um and I, I I laugh at my son because I was like, you know, he'll he'll be playing football or something. I'm like, son, I'm, I'm, I want you to do good. You know, I want you to you know make sure you catch the ball, do this, do that. You know, see see the you know when you when the player is coming at you, you know, juke him, all this stuff. You know, I'm telling you this because son, I was actually way better than you at your age. I, was, <laughs> I had boy, you wouldn't even be able to be on the field with me. Like, are you, boy, like I was, I used to play as a, my dad was a coach, like I said. So I used to play with guys that were in high school when I was a kid. I'd be a little kid. I'm talking about elementary and I'm over there playing with their high school kids. I play with the, you know, the, the freshmen coming in, you know? Um, so I, I mean, I was, I mean, that's why I got so much better so fast, you know, mm-hmm. cause I'm, I'm playing with grown people. I mean, these kids is, you know, 15, 16, I'm in elementary, I'm in third grade, you know, fourth grade Jesus. going out there playing with them, you know? And uh, um, so that's what I was telling my son. I was like, ah, you wouldn't even be able to know. Like, I'd be laughing at you playing football. It would be, a, I mean, it's a massacre. Like, because I was, I was actually really fast for my age, too. I ran, I ran, uh, we ran, the, I got to go to a junior track meet, like a junior regional track meet. Mm-hmm. Um, it's for kids or whatever, right? But I got to run there with no training. I came in first in the 200. <laughs> second, <laughs> second. I was fast. Like, I ran like a 4.9 in like elementary. Like, I was super like fast. Like, I beat, there's a kid I, right now. His name's Kadero Gray. He's a pro track runner. Um, I beat him in, in elementary running. You know what I mean? And he's a pro right now, right now to this day. And and I and then in elementary, I was just I just because I was already I already did that all the time. You know, like I go to the practices. Yeah, football. all them fast twitch muscles. Yeah, I was ready. already doing that. Yeah. So I, yeah, and I beat him running. You know, and he's a pro right now. So that's so why I was telling my son. I was like, No, your dad was on another level. Like it, it's you know I didn't get better you know um till i got to high school like i actually stopped you know getting better because i was so much better than everybody Mm -hmm. for such a long time that i just actually like peaked for a little bit then when i got my like probably my junior year of high school then i had another growth spurt and then took off again but other than that yeah because i was actually okay in like my freshman year my sophomore year was like "Eh, i was okay you know because everybody started catching up to me and then then i hit another growth spurt finally because yeah i just i just I don't know. I was just little, and I never got bigger, right? So I just peaked right there, and then yeah, took off junior year, and then boom. I mean, then I uh, all American in high school, mm-hmm. all American college, then got drafted by the Cardinals and stuff. So 
yeah, my story is kind of like, yeah. And I, I like, I got the, you know what, I, you know what, I'm blessed because I, I had got like a great story. My story is pretty cool because my dad was the coach. It's like some varsity blues or some, right, something, right. So, and in Texas, too. yeah, and so in that's Texas like football, the, the you Graceland know? of yeah, of football. And 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 like my wife um, now, right now is uh, my high school sweetheart. And so we're Palm King and Queen in high school, and she was the cheerleader too. So like that's crazy. Yeah. So I had that like Cinderella cool like story. that cool like story, you know, that you see on TV. Like that's actually that's, I, that's what I lived, and then then got a you know got a scholarship full ride to Oklahoma. You know, the big big program. Right. You know, so that that was, and then I you know that was I had a lot of adversity over there because I wasn't starting at the beginning, and then uh, I didn't have the coach I really liked. And, this and that and blah 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 and, and then finally though I got a new coach in that coach the DBs and then he he's like hey you gonna be the starter and I took off from there and then had a great season I actually came in second and um, uh, like all around defense so like what is it called um, man I can't even remember the name for it now <laughs> been out too long but uh, uh, like pass breaks up breakups interceptions uh, all that stuff combined like I was number two in the country for that so I had a good season after that but yeah it was I had the little fairy tale little thing you know that you see on TV you know that was that's well that's why I was interested to have you on because one of the things most of us or at least the people that do listen to this mm -hmm. for me I know one of our dreams is always to be a professional sports player. Mm -hmm. I mean, every kid really at some point, especially a boy, is looking at a professional sports team going, all right, I'm going to be – I'm on my porch at night with the light on, dribbling basketball. Yeah. You know, <laughs> We didn't have football in my school. We couldn't right. afford the insurance. Right. They actually got a football program a few years back. Mm -hmm. So I always said, too, if I ever made some good money and could go back and you know do a tax write-off real good, <laughs> it would be to that school because, I mean, they – yeah. We we doubled down on basketball. We had an amazing basketball program because we couldn't afford Boy, football. football yeah. yeah, so basketball to me was like, it was it. Like I loved it. And then once Tom Brady stepped in <laughs> on that field, it changed everything a little bit in New England. You know, because mm -hmm. we all we all watched, we all watched. You know, Bledsoe. Right. We all watched all that stuff. We had no problem with it. But it wasn't until that happened, and then it was like, okay. Now everybody wants to play football here. Right. Now it means something to play football in New England. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, it was too late for me at that point. I was already like graduating and shit like right. that. But it's cool because now I'm seeing this whole generation of kids that we never had anything right. doing that. And now they have a football team and they're doing really well. And it's, it's pretty neat. Like one of my other questions for you was, um, what was more fun, college or the NFL? Oh, fun! Ah, uh, yeah, like college. College is always the funnest. Is it? Yeah, you, you're hanging out with like. I mean, you're in college. Right, right. You know the college parties. You know, just just the whole little now thing did, that comes with. Did college. Ashley go? To yeah, that she, school she didn't you? go to school with me, but she did uh, uh, attend another school in Oklahoma, and then she worked. So, cause you know Oklahoma's kind of expensive. We didn't have all that kind of money. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, um, to do that, but. Uh, yeah, she worked a lot, and then we, and then we had a kid my sophomore year of college. That was that was adversity right there. You wow. I mean? Yeah, and I actually hold on. See, that's what I'm saying. I had like kind of like the fairy tale. I ain't gotta tell people this because you know what I mean people don't know, and then like, yeah. So I'm like, I um, we actually you know I went to school. I like I got real stories in life. It's like crazy stories, like but they're good. You know what I mean? Like they're like what people deal with and how to overcome them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like I even got kicked out of school before in college. You know what I mean? So I mean I had I got a, a lot of get kicked out of school. Yeah, this is a mess. But I got, <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't nothing crazy though. Like they still brought me back, but it wasn't nothing crazy. But um, yeah, I uh, uh, we had a kid, and then um, we needed assistance. You know, like because you know daycare, you know food, just baby, just baby stuff. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how are we gonna afford that? And I'm going to uh, school playing football. And she's working all day, but I mean, you still can't afford that on one person, and you got a kid and all that. And then they I'm was, trying to figure that shit out right now, and I yeah, got two people. Yeah, paying. you're like, hey, how am I gonna pay for daycare? Because daycare is expensive. I know. You know what I mean? Like people, like we all pay for daycare right now for my. These are real life situations I'm these dealing are, with right now. Yeah, like I literally <laughs> just started dealing with this like yesterday. Yo, I'm trying to tell you, like I I lived everything. I lived every kind of life too. I lived from poor to having money. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? To middle class, I had all. I I lived in every realm, you know, and dealt with so many different types of people. So, like when I went to school and we had, and we, she was pregnant, and I was like nineteen years old, and um, 
Uh, so we had him, you know, and then I actually got kicked out of school when we had him. That's what I'm saying. Like, it was crazy. And then I, I had to go to another, like, uh, like a JUCO school or, you know what I mean, like community college. And and then um, um, I did that while I was taking care of him. And I went to work at Walmart uh, at nights. And then in the daytime, I would take care of him. And then my wife would go to work. And then we every day like that for, like, probably did that for, like, a good six months. Then I got back and stayed in the school. And then... Dang, did I get kicked out after that too? <laughs> Jesus, dude. I had some crazy stories, and then, but the then uh, they wouldn't like, give us any like food stamps, assistance, or nothing, right? And so then I'm going to school, and then, like you know daycare, I can't, it's like two hundred dollars a week. You know what I mean? Like two hundred dollars a week for a college kid? What? That's I was getting crazy. paid seven hundred a month. How am I going to pay two hundred dollars a week? Even if I use my whole money, it still wasn't enough to having to go to school. So we we applied for that, and then um, you know the the city or whatever, the state um, said, hey, you need to go to school if you want to, I mean, uh, you need to work if you're going to um, uh, get on assistance. And I'm like, I can't work. I'm. You see me on TV right now, right? I just played in the Fiesta Bowl, whatever it is, right? Like, like how am I going to play on, you know, college football on Saturdays, you know, in wherever city we're playing in, and then and then go to work? Like, I was busy all day, and so I had to I showed them my schedule. My schedule's packed. I'm talking about I worked up, work, woke up at 5 in the morning every day and, wor- and worked out. Then went to my first class at like 8. So I worked out, lunch, I mean breakfast, uh, fo- uh, school, then football practice, then tutoring. That was my whole day. Our days were, like you're talking about real work. Like in college football, <laughs> they, I mean, they work all day. I mean, we used to get home at like 8 o'clock and Damn, start it all dude. over again. They didn't have somebody just doing your homework for you, Man, bro? we wish. Fuck. And you know when they be snitching on people nowadays? I'm like, yeah. why are y'all snitching? Y'all, y'all understand the, the the schedule that they're going through? I mean, they they have to get up, work out. I mean, because you have to work out. You, you're playing a sport. Oh, yeah. Then, then you got to eat breakfast. Then you got to go to uh, uh, class. You know what I mean? You have to go to class. It's the only reason why you got the scholarship. And then you have to go um, uh, to football practice or whatever practice that you're doing. And then back to tutoring, right, to get your work done, homework done for the next day. So these are like long days. So like, And then you got to party. I mean, yeah, then you got yeah, you got to find can. some time. You need you know, a break. Yeah, you need a break, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> damn. Yeah, and then we used to do that. So then, like, and then, like, so the so the city or government or whatever, right, state, probably the state, wouldn't allow me to get assistance. And so we actually had a judge come in, and um, I showed him my whole stuff, and I told him like, my name is Jamel Fleming. You see me on TV, right? And he's like, yeah. I was like. How you think I'm gonna be able to <laughs> go to go to have a job? Is, have a job. It's hard to get like, on do you TV. see me on TV though? Like, how how am I working? Do you see me right there? I, I, don't even make make sense. Like, you see the dude on TV. I mean, how he's gonna have a job? Like, come on now. Like, <laughs> just and he's like, yeah. So actually, they changed the law in Oklahoma for you to be able to go if you have on a, if you're on a scholarship, you're able to um, still get on assistance. Wow. Yeah, because of Jamel Fleming right here. So that was actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give this man a round of applause. Yeah, that's, not, that's not, some cra- not dude, a lot of people know that. You know what I mean? So that's people don't. You know what the crazier part is? Is that people take advantage of it, mm-hmm. and then there's good people like in your situation that needed it, right? Mm-hmm. You actually needed it for the right reasons. Right. You weren't trying to live on it. Right. You were just trying to like get through this last part right. till we were gonna get right. what we needed to go further. And they feel bad. Mm-hmm. It's like they feel like, fuck, I don't want to go on assistance because it makes me feel like I'm a yes. bad person or yes. a loser. And it's yeah. like, no, that's what it's for. For, yeah. Like I told my sister that when she moved out here. I'm like, look, dude, if you're, if anything doesn't work, you know, they were waiting on the army to help them. I was mm-hmm. like, that's what it's for. The people that are just using it all the time, they're ruining it for everybody and they're what? taking advantage of it. Like not – there's people that are on it all the time yeah, that aren't yeah. taking advantage yeah. of it. But there's a lot of people that – I know people. Mm-hmm. Like I know them. And it, it used well, to me, bug the shit out of me because no. it was like – he's like, I got you. And it's like, <laughs> no, bro, stop getting it and just go get a job. job. Yeah. So let me tell you though about this because like, I, I like to dive deep into the little things, right? So even with that, right? So I had a period of time in my life where I needed it because we had a kid. I mean, like how are we going to feed the kid? I'm, I'm Oklahoma is paying me only like – Seven hundred dollars, I think, a month. It was, I mean, it was no more than seven hundred a month. I mean, my rent was five ninety five or whatever, right? And so I went. I had like a hundred and five dollars left over or something, you know? Like, bro, like, what are you gonna do with one hundred and five dollars for a whole month? You a can't whole buy that month. That, bro. I can't buy gas. You feel me? They just didn't get this school, and uh, um, so. You know, that's what I was like. So I used to pay the rent, and then my wife used to work. So then, like, we paid for the rest of the stuff, right? But we needed, we needed like two hundred dollars. That's eight hundred 
eight hundred dollars a month that we pay in just daycare, and I was only getting paid seven hundred. Like that's easy math right there. Like the you know what I mean? That's crazy. So dude. that's not even rocket While science. Trying to play football. And right, right. Yeah, I was like, and I was told to God, I was like, so do you not want me to be on the football field anymore? You know what I mean? Like, do you want me to go get a job and not play football? And then you know they're like, of course not. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and no, so I was like, you were on TV for us. Yeah, don't I was like, do that. you know, Oklahoma love their football yeah, that's too. What I'm they love like, their football. Like, whoa, so they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, maybe we have to rethink this. Yeah, we're fucking up. <laughs> yeah, we should probably, you know, at least try to help them out. You but know I, mean, I mean, it does make sense because you are putting on for for the, the city. City, yeah. And that's a big thing. Like yeah. the festival the is a huge thing. Yeah, it's like it's nationwide. Everybody watches mm-hmm. that, and. Yeah, dude, that's a big deal to hear that name and to see that jersey and to see all that stuff that to mean something. Right. And then when they're trying to tell you, like, hey, you got to go work. Yeah. Like, sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. Sorry, we understand. Like, you want to be a good dad <laughs> and you want to really provide for him. And boy, you're fast. You're fast, but, but you, you have to take your fast a, yeah, ass you, to the grocery <laughs> store. Gonna, like, that's crazy. You got to get a job. You know what I mean? So I worked, I worked, uh, I worked oh, at a, God, um, that's nuts. a law office in college. I worked at a, um, a roofing company in college, um, so I did, we did a lot, you know. But those are so you were living you know, like straight up grown up life. Yeah, you weren't living like a typical college football you know, player. Yeah, I didn't really have that whole college, you know, just mentality. You know, what I mean, as far as like just oh, we're just gonna go out and do this and do... that's where you get a lot of trouble at though. Yeah, you the few I knew that that's kind. Of, I mean, they didn't get in trouble that much, but. Mm-hmm. And you it, need, it, it seemed fun. Yeah, and afar. you need stability in your life, though. You know what I mean? Like for real. Even if you're in college, you still need that stability because it, because it can, it could, it could lead you down a bad path for the rest of your life because you didn't have your mind right. Because that's a really, it's a crucial age. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. that's when you like, you know, kind of find yourself. You know what I mean? Yep. Like you don't know everything about yourself, but you actually like you're independent. Like you gotta go make your own food. You know what I mean? Like you ain't at the house with your mom where she cooked dinner every night mm-hmm. and she washes your clothes and you know what I mean? She takes you to school and you know what I mean? Yeah, like, you're not actually the same person anymore because uh, like you were presented as this person with right. clean clothes, yeah. always ate, all this stuff. And yeah. then when you're on your own, mm-hmm. you start to go bummy mode. Yeah, because you gotta wake yourself up yeah. in the morning. Mm-hmm. Who wakes you up? You gotta get yourself up. Your mom don't get to come in there and say, hey, little Jimmy, hey, get up and ready to school. Like mm-hmm. that doesn't, no, 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 no. So, ooh. Oh, it's she gave me them sparkling. Some, I know. I love, uh, dude. I, I drink them too much. I gotta stop drinking them, <laughs> so, especially uh, on this podcast. <laughs> I know, got every, all the time. Everybody burping on the. I know the, the last one was terrible. <laughs> but yeah, you know that was that was experience. You know what I mean? And um, like we had our own little uh, duplex, me and my wife, and all that. You know, but it learned this like responsibility real quick. So that was, you know, I can't. I wouldn't take that back for the for anything. That must have been a blessing when you got to the league, then because you weren't. I'm sure a lot of people go nuts when you, know you start what? getting a little bit of money. You know what? It's hard. Oh, how do I explain it? It's hard in the league to. I, I love having you know was you know having a well we got married in the league like uh, 2013 mm-hmm. so we got married that's when we got married or whatever but um, I love I actually had a family when I was in the league because it's tough like when you don't have a family because you just get random people you know what I mean all yeah. the time and like you don't want to deal with like. That's a hard thing to deal with, you know. What I mean, just think if you're dealing with random strangers all the time, like that's rough. Like it doesn't sometimes look no, as no, fun. It looks cool on TV, you know. Like you know, it's just like a movie. It's cool for that hour, but yeah, yeah after that, after it's that, very lonely. You in the feel real me? Life situation. Yeah, in a real life situation, you're like yo, that's that's a lot to deal with. That's why you see some of these dudes keep turn into kind of weirdos. Yeah, you know they do, and like and uh, um, I mean, but I, I mean, I can see why. I mean, it's just it's a lot to process and not to deal with and. And then you're a dude, so it's like, you know, you like the chicks and stuff yeah. like this. And then like, but, I mean, it's a lot to deal with them, too. But you worked real you hard for I mean? that, too. You yeah. worked a r- really hard to get to yeah, that point. Yeah, Most of them. Most of oh, well, yeah. There's a few of them out there yeah. that's just like, how the, you're not human. <laughs> yes. But like, they still, but like, you know what I mean? Dealing with that, the families dealing, I mean, that's a lot to deal with in the league. I mean, or any sport, too, like basketball, baseball, especially mm-hmm. baseball, if you can pay that much money. I mean, like, goodness. Like, we had that conversation with, like, what was the sport? Like, yeah. if you were going to financially look at it, like, what's what's probably the smartest way to go? Baseball is the smartest. The wear and tear on your body is, like, minimal. Minimal. Yeah, and it's Dead just, Jeter like... looks younger than and, me, bro. Yeah, and it's just right here where you would get, you know, your elbows and stuff. Like, it would be shoulders and elbows. That's really it. I mean, you get... I they mean, got stem it, cells for that shit, that's, too. That's, that's it. Like, fast. That's all. That's mm-hmm. all. That's that would be the only joints that you would actually like have to uh, 
have to really worry about in baseball. And your hips, you know, maybe, but like you don't really see people with knee problems in baseball. There's not too many collisions. You know in what baseball. I mean? Like, yeah, and and so I boy was, though, you could you could take that one straight if you're a pitcher though. You take the one right down yeah, the yeah, line to yeah, the face, bro. Face, you're yeah. done. Yeah. That's that's, but that's one. That could I mean, be death. That could be. Or you catch that fastball from Randy Johnson. That's true. You know, you don't uh, want that smoke. Hey, but you, hey, you see that video of him exploding the bird? <laughs> no. Oh, here, yeah, driving here. when the bird went by. Yeah, the right. bird flew down and by he, and yeah, hit it with and like, he, like a 99-mile-an-hour <laughs> fastball. Just, exp- just poop. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that's crazy, though. That is crazy. I mean, especially like... That's a Texan, right? Yeah. He's a Texan. Yeah, he looks like a be, Texan. Hey, he's got to be. Hey, I don't know, but he, he's he Texan. Looks like he's I, I'm going to claim him. You know what I was going to say, where's my shit? Siri will tell me. I know, right? But... But yeah, you know... But, oh, back to like, you know, with that school thing, too, about... Um, uh, oh. <laughs> I told you she was listening. She's listening. Um, uh, being on... Um, uh, you know, government assistance. You know, the funny thing is, like, I noticed because that's what I'm saying. I lived so many different lives, you know, like model, you know, growing up middle class, you know what I mean? And then, um, you know, going to college and basically being broke. So, you know, <laughs> and going to NFL and getting paid. So, like, the thing is that I learned is that when you're poor, you get help. You know what I mean? When you're poor, you're not really as stressed as people make it seem because, like, the government pays for your daycare, right? <clears throat> so are you stressed about paying for your daycare? No, because it's so much. It's it was like a hundred dollars a month now instead of two hundred dollars a week. Yeah. So now you're not really stressed about that. You know what I mean? And then um, you know you have food if you're on food stamps. So your your fridge is full. Like you always got food. So if you, yeah, you might not be able to go out to eat all the time. And shoot, I think Jack in the Box takes food stamps now. Mm-hmm. So like you you got food. You know what I mean? And then the money you have that you that you need or that you're getting, you can pay for your your rent and you pay for your car note. So really, it's it, it's different, you know what I mean? And then you have insurance through the government. So you don't have to pay for what? Insurance. Like, when you're poor, you're taken care of. Middle class is where you get screwed over at. And then and then uh, when you're rich, it don't matter because you got money to pay for it. So <laughs> that's totally different. It's like, oh, well, food, I can pay for that. It's now nothing. you just got to make sure you, you know don't I mean? overspend. Yeah, 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 you don't have to overspend. But middle class is really the toughest class to be in, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because... You don't get help, so you have to pay that eight hundred dollars a month for child care. So that means you have to work or get paid that much to pay for it. And then they have like a, a tier, you know, uh, if you get paid this much more, then yes, you get screwed because you got to pay for you know your taxes, and then you got to pay you know the daycare that's eight hundred. You like, damn, my, you, I mean, how much more are you making really than the the, the poor person? Bro, it's hard being in you the know? middle class because it's, I'll tell you right now, it's a lot tougher. One of one of your goals as a person coming up in the middle class, mm-hmm. as I am, is. You want to excel and you want to do better every year and try to make more money. Mm-hmm. And the chances of me hitting that million dollar idea are probably slim. They might happen, but it's probably slim. Right. So I'm going to progress at a normal rate, maybe mm-hmm. a little faster than others. But like you said, it puts me in a different bracket every time it happens. So even though I accomplish a goal, I set myself back and it's so fucking discouraging sometimes. It is. And you just can't, like, it's tough for my wife. She's got a degree, she's a teacher. Yeah. You so know, my sister, they, and my sister has a degree, and she works for the IRS. And, and she's so still, smart, yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. Like, she's so smart, and she scored high everything and was, you know, Dean's yeah. List and all this shit. And it's like the amount that she has to pay back is more than – it's like more than a year's yeah. salary for him. Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. Like, and then you got guys like me that didn't go to college. Right. That are just grinding the system fucking to the bone <laughs> until I figure it out. And and it works. It does. It works. It but does. you just you definitely put yourself, you know, I'm like I said, I'm about to run into this same situation we're yeah. talking about. Because yeah. I'm gonna have to look at that. Yeah. She either stops working. Uh-huh. You know. By the way, if nobody saw any posts that I did today, I'm having a child in August. Um I have no clue if it's boy, girl, or alien yet, but <laughs> we're excited. <laughs> They're pumped up. So, but yeah, it's kind of scary because, yeah, you yeah. know, and then do you want somebody raising your child mm, at that stage? Not for maybe the first year, but it is good to get them in there because I noticed socialization yes, or whatever that they, shit yeah, is. Yeah, they're used to other people, used to other kids. Um, Nothing worse than when you meet the kid that like never had interaction. Oh, those are actually creepy kids. Because you just don't. Like, shows you how creepy humans are. Yeah. If they were like, secluded. Yes, secluded. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, they are. Like, it's the kids are. 
they need that, you know what I mean? They need the interaction, you know, with other people and stuff, you know, because yeah, being keeping them away from other kids, and because and, and then they get this mommy effect too. I seen the kids that that stayed with their mom or whatever, right, and uh, at home or whatever, and yeah, yeah, they're not they're not social kids, you know what I mean? And uh, and and in life, you need to be social, you know what I mean? You can't just you know just be socially awkward, but I mean it's just it's just too weird. Plus, you get picked on when you go to school, mm-hmm. like later on, like. And then you're setting your kid up for failure doing it that way. Um, I think, and I think too, like they get to you know play and color, and they get to have imagination, you know, when they're with the kids. Well, they need like to learn that. how to share social space with somebody. They do, because no matter what, if you seclude them right up until they're eighteen, twenty, whatever, eventually they're going to have to go to the grocery store. They're going to have to go to the doctor, <laughs> and it's so the same good. thing. I always tell people: with you have to discipline your kids. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't have a kid yet, so it's easy for me to say. Right. And I'm not saying you need to smack your kid, but here's the deal. If you can't su- figure out a way to teach your kid a level of respect and how to teach or how to talk to authority, mm-hmm. three things are going to happen. When they get grown up, they're going to get fired for their job because they don't know how to deal with their boss. Right. They're going to get arrested by a police officer or shot because mm-hmm. they don't know how to talk to a police officer. Look, dude, I've done a lot of dumb shit in my life, and I've been in interactions with police officers, and especially even now as an adult. I never have a problem. And right. you could say it's because I'm white, <laughs> but I'll guarantee you it's not because I've been pulled 50%. over by Mexican and black people <laughs> right. you know, too, and they still treat me the same way right. because I'm polite, mm-hmm. and I don't try to beat around. Like, I don't mess with them. Mm-hmm. Like, you pulled me over, I was probably speeding, like... Don't do dumb shit. You don't got to play a dumb game. So there's two. And then the third one is you're going to get mopped. Mm -hmm. You're going to say some shit to somebody because you've been allowed to talk to your mom or whoever (laughs) like that your whole life. And you're going to run into the wrong one. Right. And he or she is going to put you out. Mm -hmm. And dude, you just don't like you don't need to do all that. Right. You could start at a young age. Like as crazy as I was, my mom drilled it into my head. Mm -hmm. That you were polite to everybody. everybody. When you went to somebody's house, it's please, thank you, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. You do all those things because you have to learn how to be in a social place because eventually I'm not going to be standing there over you <laughs> trying to protect you or tell you, yes. hey, you can't say that. Yes. And that it's, I was raised by a pretty badass woman, dude. She she didn't play that shit. And you know, she just throw you, you know on a dirt what? bike, send you, know you on what? your way. No, I know the kids like d- deal with the social space and all that, you know, and, you know, go to school, all this, all those things. My problem is I notice like with the kids, they're not they're they're still kind of socially awkward. I don't know if it's the video games or, you know, when I see the kids nowadays outside, you know what I mean. Like some of them are good, you know what I mean. Like, but I see some kids, I'm like, man, do y'all not do y'all don't talk to adults? Like, what's going on? You know. So I you know I seen that. Um, that's been very odd. Yeah, that is. Or weird. you know, like I don't know if it's because of the games. I think it is just the games, and it's not. I think people put, you know, because games are they're, they're good, you know. What I mean, they get to talk to their friends on the, you know, because you know they can do the internet stuff. And uh, but uh, you know, my thing is, I they need to go out and like play and like actually interact like yeah. person to person, you know, with people, you know. Um, so because um, yeah, you're just talking to some random kid in Ohio on your, <laughs> yeah, you know, your game, you know what I mean. So like, I'm like, you kind of need to go outside, interact with the kids, and well, without the structure, mm-hmm. like I'm talking about. What I think you're going to see a lot more of is Asperger's and ADHD Mm -hmm. because I have severe ADHD. I have high-functioning ADHD. If you're ever around me for more than 20 minutes, it's not hard to figure out. Like you can tell. You take medicine? Nope. No medicine? Nope, nope, never take medicine. What? And then that's that's the other thing is it really impresses people when they find out because it's taken me years. Like, dude, I still get in a car after a conversation mm-hmm. and beat myself up. Like, oh, you talked to me. You did this. You did that. <laughs> but that's my medicine. That's my like my yeah, reality check. Yeah. Like, all right, buddy, mm-hmm. slow down on this next one. Right. You don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. And it's hard, and it was hard through high school and middle school. It took me five years to graduate high school. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I was not the greatest kid, but when I figured it out, I had high honors, I'm, right. you know, I'm intelligent. I know how to enunciate and say what I, you know, put my words out there for people. But the problem was, is they didn't understand what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. And like when I did take medicine a few times and it all of a sudden, like all the chatter stopped mm-hmm. and the crazy thoughts that are running through my head about like, oh, I wonder what this person's doing. Oh, I didn't do this or I should try this. Or, right. That stopped. And all of a sudden I was sitting in class and I'm listening to the teacher and I'm like, this is what you guys get to be like every day. 
Like that's it's kind of boring. Up. It's kind of boring it life, is, isn't it? It is boring. Isn't it boring but, life? But when you have to learn something and mm -hmm. you're being held to a standard, yeah. And they're saying you got to pass this class, you got to learn mm -hmm. this shit, and take this test. And my shit's over there, like, okay, Keegan, you got to listen to him. You got to pay attention. And then within 20 seconds, maybe less, all of a sudden I'm looking right at him. And my brain is just gone. And it's over here. And yeah. then I bring it back, and then it's gone. Like where a normal person's like, oh yeah, that happens to me. It's like, yeah, but you let it happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to. I am focused so hard <laughs> on trying to stay on track. Man, I got. I have two family members, two kids, uh, two nephews actually, um, that have ADHD. I mean, um, the thing about ADHD, there's always like pros and cons to it, right? So like, yeah, in school, it's not very good. But in society, actually, it is kind of good. Because like, you're able to accomplish more things. You're able to think outside of the box mm -hmm. than, than uh, most people. Like my wife doesn't have that, right? Like I got, I got ADHD. I mean, my one, one diagnosed with it. That's why conversations are wasn't over Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I wasn't diagnosed with it, you know what I mean? But I know I have it because like my mind's just always wondering, thinking, you know, and I'm always thinking about, um, a solution to a problem or this mm -hmm. or that, right? And and I notice with other people they do not think like that. They 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 let something either just stay bothering them or whatever it is. Like they don't they don't they don't ever come up with with other thoughts in their head. You know what I mean? Like if it's a problem or they'll just stay with that problem. They'll just be down on that problem forever. You know what I mean? Like me, I'm oh. Oh, okay, I'm good now. You know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. I'm, it's kind of like him. They almost bipolarism. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's you always see me clean this house. I'll clean all the I go room to room and I do stuff but mm -hmm. it's like when you lace up shoes and at the mm -hmm. end you pull the laces and everything's perfect mm -hmm. it's it's hard for my wife to watch mm -hmm. she doesn't like watching me clean the house because it's very stressful for her because right. it's like I'll start doing something and leave it and then go over here and then I just kind of work my way, way back around. into a yeah. circle yeah. but there's a lot of stuff that I do accomplish right. that people struggle with every day that you yeah. know and just being able to walk in and have a conversation with anybody mm -hmm. I'm lucky to have that, but it took a lot of structure from my mom mm -hmm. and it took a lot of not rules as much as like morals that mm -hmm. you're taught as a kid. Mm -hmm. And now that it's a lot looser, I think you're seeing that they want the kids to express themselves, but there's no, okay, you can express yourself, but dial it back a little bit because that's not okay. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you're going to see a lot more Asperger's. You're mm -hmm. going to see a lot more ADHD because right. just there's no structure on them. Right. Like kids that might have a little bit of it, but with good discipline, that shit would have been gone within a minute. Yeah. They're going to have it. Right. And it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse. You know what, though, too? Um, so my nephew, right, he has it and they, they give him medicine for it. Mm -hmm. And I and you actually can see when he gets it. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you're talking about 20 minutes around, you know, you. So like when I'm at, I was at their house uh, probably like in the summer, right? And they live in Austin, Texas. And I was sitting there, and uh, he starts like, like jumping on the couch, but like walking and like talking to himself or something about something. And my and my brother in law was like, "Hey man, you take your you take your medicine." And he was like, "No." And he's like, "Go take your medicine." And he's like, "I could see it when he starts when he uh, when he starts kicking in, like because he's like he just it's not that he's disruptive or anything. He gets like kind of like distracted. But you know what's weird though? And they took him to the doctor, and the doctor was like. The, the thing about ADHD people, they accomplish a lot in life, you know what I mean? Because they're able to think outside the box than, than normal people. Because we had five thoughts you know what I mean? to yeah, someone's yeah, one. Yeah. And we picked you, the one out of those five, like, holy fuck, that's a good that's one. That's a good one, yeah. Pull that no, 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 out, no, no. and yeah. that's exactly what it is. Yeah, because they have more imagination than everybody he else. He's getting flooded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why he's walking back and forth and, and rattling, because he's getting flooded with, like, his brain is brain, just pumping yeah. it out, and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> so that's the cool thing, you know, and uh, about the at least ADHD is that you know, you know, what people is like. At least if your kid has it, I mean, he, he and 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 when you talk about structure, it's perfect because I that's what I'm saying. Like I kind of got ADHD, so I think a lot, and I'm I come up with a lot of different ideas and a lot of different things to do. And my wife really helps me accomplish it because she's very structured. Mm -hmm. So we're like actually, actually like a, a great pairing because she she doesn't have imagination me like me. She has her thoughts are not near nearly as even like in the same classification as my thoughts in my head. Like I'll come up with so many different things about so many different reasons of why. And no, her she no no. Can, but she can do stuff. But she like can, my wife. She can sit just, down yeah. and actually just type it out. You know what I mean? Me, I'm over there like. All right, I'm tired. Uh, let's go do something else. Oh, yeah, you know I what I mean? Go check this over here. <laughs> yeah, and so that's that's the cool thing. Like they, because you have, you know, you come up with ideas. You just need people that are structured. Routine helps. Yeah, routine helps me a lot. Like when we go on to Christmas vacation time and all that stuff, I can tell after the week. Mm -hmm. 
because now my routine's gone. I'm right. not in the gym at 5.30 or 6. Like, right. I'm not doing the things that I normally do. I'm not getting a coffee at 8. Mm -hmm. Like, even though I don't need the caffeine, like, that's part of my routine. Wash my truck, like, all those things. And when I do those things in sync, the way they're supposed to be done for me, my day is very successful. Right. But after a week of not doing it, you can see the chaos. There'll be seven pairs of shoes on the floor in right. this house. And it's just like, dude, what are you doing? You walked past that pair of shoes six times. You just even told yourself in the head, like, oh, you got to pick those shoes up and right. walked right by them. Well, you're and worse like, than me because I at least pick up my shoes. But. Yeah, I don't, but, <laughs> but it's a weird, it's not. No, I feel you, you guys, It's like my house isn't that cluttered. No. It's not. It's, it's just this thing and mm -hmm. I can't control it sometimes. And the medicine thing though is tough because when you take it and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're like, that's not me. Right. Like I couldn't do my job. I, I gotta take the medicine one time to see what it what it feels like. It's not. Uh, I wonder what that would be like. It gives me headaches now because like I took a job. I don't know <laughs> if it was this one or the last one. I took some Adderall, not a lot of it, but mm -hmm. like I got like two of the pills and I broke them in fourth. So that way, I could just get a little bit. That way, I could like sit down and do all the paperwork and just be at a desk for mm -hmm. eight hours in a day because I'm not used to that. Wow. Within the third day, I had a headache. Oh, okay. And okay. I was like, yep, this is why I remember I don't take this shit no more. Right. And the emotional outbursts are friggin' crazy, what? bro. I was taking it for a short time trying to get out of a program in school and mm -hmm. get back into like honor roll. So I kept taking it when I got back into the like mainstream because I was like, shit, I'm crushing it. Like work-wise, dude, I was killing it. Mm. And then one day I remember my friend, like we finished basketball practice and he was just like, oh, I'm not going to give you a ride home today. I'm going to go hang out with this girl. And bro, I lost my shit. Wow. Like just melt down, crying, yelling, screaming, walked home in below zero weather until the point where I couldn't walk anymore. And people were trying to pull over to pick me up. And I finally got in a car because I was just like, I just lost my shit. Like I went home, lost my shit on my mom. And I knew it, dude. I went in a room that night and was like, can't take that shit no more. <laughs> Like this ain't you. You this don't. Not you. You're logical. You, even yeah, though your yeah, yeah, brain's yeah. crazy, like yeah. you still have the end game. You know in the what's back weird about ADHD people too? I feel like we are very logical people, though. You We're know playing I mean? chess. Yeah, we you know already know. Like we thought about the next couple moves, and that's the yes. Because you know what I noticed that with a lot of people that have that, you know what I mean? They're very logical people. They 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 kind of get the understanding of like like even when you have a debate with something, you you could see their point. Like because mm -hmm. as my wife, you know, that's what I said like with people, it's it's weird. Like I think I think ADHD ADHD people think they live in a different world too. Because like <laughs> than everybody else. Because I noticed like. With people that are not logical, or I wouldn't say logical, right? But when you talk to people, right, that just that are that's normal people, I guess you can say, mm -hmm. right? They have an idea, and they just think their idea is this. That's it. Like that, whatever they think it is, that's it. And and I'm like, I mean, you might your my idea is okay, you know, but you didn't get every tier. Like your whole idea wasn't covered. Like you just covered like a basis of it. You didn't mm -hmm. cover the whole the whole thing, you know. Because then I'll tell my wife, like, what, what about this? And what about this? What about this happens? And then, you know I mean? They, they can't give you answers for it. And I was like, you didn't think about this whole thing? You you, you, you threw out this You're plan. fixated on this one point. Yeah. That, I and I think that that's why, hold on, hold on. I think that's why politics and politicians do what they do. They stick to one thing. You know what I mean? Because the mass of people Because, like because they're mass of people. And I, cause I was always like, they come up with these ideas and I'm like, uh, this is this is stupid. Like, why would you why would you throw that out there? Like, not everybody's gonna like your idea. I I wouldn't. You know, when who who has ADHD and who's president right now? <laughs> Trump. I'm I'm trying to tell you, people just don't <clears throat> ADHD people. I think like they're a different breed of people. Like, what I mean by that he is he might like, not have it though. He, he might he, he just be it. on the meds he got that it. are making you seem like because like it's <laughs> or he's making if I his, take his meds. Or, or I'm gonna sit still. <laughs> Dude, he's on some methamphetamines, bro. Yeah, whatever he's on. I'm so. telling you because, like, if you ever thought about him, you know, when you think when you think about Trump, right? He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Have you noticed when he talks? When he, he's everywhere, it's like, bro, you need a freaking plan. He's like on speed, yo. He that's the only difference between an ADHD person and speed is I didn't have to take no shit in the morning to right. get like this. Right. And my teeth are good. But you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> that's it. That's it. But you feel what I'm saying though? Yeah. Have you thought about that with him? Well, because he's like, 73, I think. Mm -hmm. 73 or mm -hmm. 74. I had to explain this to my wife because when he got elected, she was appalled at the shit he was saying. And yeah, I said, yeah. well, how old do you think she, he is? Mm -hmm. She goes, oh, 50, 54. And I said, no, he's, he's 72 he's at shit. the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, he's a billionaire. Mm-hmm. Whether you believe it or not, he's very rich right. from Manhattan. 
Now, we grew up on the East Coast. I was in New York a lot. Of course. If you ever meet one of those people, they're mm. all like that. Most of those people that live down there that got a lot of money are assholes, and they speak just like he does, mm. and they don't give a shit. Right. So I'm not, I was never surprised he was going to speak like that. I've ran into people that were worth millions of dollars in, in New York, and you see it. Like, that's how they But let me explain though, about that part, though, right? So like what you said, right? See, but people with ADHD, they're very social people. People, mm. you know, um, and they also, I mean, he might not have it, right? He just don't speak or some shit. Right? But, but like the way he <laughs> acts, so is that's how he gets elected. He didn't have a plan. He doesn't have a plan. You know what I mean? He doesn't have a, a certain thing like, yo, this is what I believe and this is what we're going to do. He, he he just goes where the wind blows. You know what I mean? Um, and, it makes and, it hard to defend. If yes, you because do you next. don't know what he's going to come with and you cannot give him, you can't, it's hard to debate against somebody that, uh, their negatives are positives. It's weird. Like it's it's when somebody has like have you ever noticed like when they have like all the other people, the candidates, they have a certain thing, right? Well, they get knocks on it because like, well, this doesn't help these people. Or oh, so you just tell them to take money from the rich, or are oh, you going to just do this, right? So they always have a someone's always can de- debate against them, but you can't. De- it's harder to debate against Trump. I'll just put some pull some shit out of his ass. Trump just <laughs> sat down with a good writer and said, "How can I say some racist shit mm-hmm. without?" It being racist Mm -hmm. because a lot of people are still maybe not racist, but they're Mm -hmm. angry right? and they don't want to admit they're angry Mm -hmm. and they don't know how to explain that. So when he words some shit that's like, well, we're not racist if we believe that. Mm -hmm. We're not. We're just angry. Right. And he said it and the president can say it, then I agree with him. And that's, I mean. Well, I don't, I wouldn't speak for everybody else that, that likes Trump. I, I know why Trump does what he does. See, old old white men, that's how they talk. That's just how they talk. I know. The people think they're so like, they're just, saying. people just think they're racist. I was like, no, 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 that's just how they, doesn't matter who you meet, that's just how they're they talk. They're programmed to they be programmed, like, they're we thinking had that talk like that. last week, that's yeah. programming. That like, is, that is not, that is not because they truly believe this certain thing. Like, his wife is what? From somewhere, wherever she's from? She's from like, like yeah, like yeah. Ukraine or yeah, some yeah. crazy shit. Yeah, like, something Yeah, something Russian. crazy, right? Like, yeah. Um, but they don't they don't really think like like races just like that you know what I mean and a lot of race and and all white racist people because I'm telling you my mom did tell me this all the time like they will tell you that they're racist mm-hmm. you know what I mean they don't just like sugarcoat and like no 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 I'm not racist like oh yeah I am racist like they're just gonna die. No, I'm not gonna tell nobody I'm not racist. Texas, I'm not racist. Texas scenarios like yeah, that are a little different though. Yeah, we're a little messed. But uh but that's but that's the thing, like that's what I noticed with them. They most of the old old white men they're they're gonna tell you like, Oh yeah, well, they're racist. You know what I mean? Like they're not gonna just like try to hide it. You know what I mean? Like, oh no, I would never say that to anybody, you know? So like a lot of the guys yeah. that you take as racist, they're not racist. They just talk like that. A lot of them just they just but they grew up in a time that that wasn't even like it's like when we grew up in the '90s and you could say, "Oh, that's gay." Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. When yeah. That shit was gay. It was yeah. stupid. Yeah. This is yeah. dumb. Yeah. Don't be a fag. That's it. And you can't do that anymore you can't do that because no more. it offends a lot of yes. people. But that's how we used to always talk. And, but the, and, and we're still kind of playing with that boundary right now. No, you, know you can't I mean? just like, be in the no, store and be still like people that will say it right no, now. No, they won't say it like how we you, we no, used bullshit, to say it all bullshit. the time. People will still say it. No, and it, it's not quite to the stage. No, it's not even close to what we did. To where racism is, right. but it's in this weird middle pocket right, right now where it's like okay, we're acknowledging it. Right. That it's bad. No. And there's still a lot of people like, look, dude, it was in a big, we don't mean mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. And that that was a, probably a stage, what, like the 70s, yeah. 80s, when they were like, we don't mean, and now we're past that point. Right. We're, we're like, no, it's not fucking tolerated totally, at yeah. all. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how you meant it, where you grew up. Like, I dressed up as a hobo as a kid. We burned a fucking cork and you put black shit all over your face mm-hmm. to look like a bum. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't trying to look like a black person. I was trying to look like a bum. But eventually, you ain't going to be able to dress up like a bum. No, you ain't going to be able to do Like it. we said, Ace Ventura. Right. You can't make that movie no, no more. Oh, no, no. You're picking on trans people. Yeah, you can't do none of that. I really don't care. I think that movie is absolutely hilarious, but you can't. You can't do none of that. And that's bullshit. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's, but that's the same thing that these old, old people, white yeah. people are saying the same. Like, mm-hmm. I know you can't say it. Right. But it's bullshit because I'm like I'm telling you we didn't mean it, in the, but you I understand, right, yeah. and that's where they're well, at, and, and that's it's fucking weird. Yeah, it, but you know, and 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 that's why I try to tell people like because you know old people, I mean they're old like that, that their mindset is old like they they that's what they were thinking like a long time ago. You know what I mean? And they didn't have to justify it then. 
You know right. what I mean? So whatever they said, and it didn't matter if it was if it was good or not, they didn't have to justify that back in the day. Like nobody was gonna hit them with the, well, what did you just tell them? You know what I mean? Nobody said anything about it. You know what Try I mean? Try rewriting a '95 Apple. <laughs> hey, you ain't doing it right. Like you're just not gonna get it to run Windows or you know the new. Man, I'm trying to tell you that's what exactly. Yeah, they're just not. They're not. I just I met so many of them, especially you know the you know doing the what we do now. You know what I mean? We oh, just yeah. we meet and they're snowbirds and we meet so many people now like. Yo, they, they're literally, they don't mean it like that. They just are like that. Like, they're just, I don't know what it is. They're just like that. You know what I mean? And 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 that's what I try to tell people is they don't, I, they they could be offending you. But the problem is, the problem that with the old people, right, is because there a lot of them are like that. You don't really know who the racist one is. Like the problem is, mm-hmm. it's like kind of like everybody's kind of like mixed bag of nuts with it. So it's like. Yeah, which well, was, yeah. You know. if, you, if you were all raised in an era where everybody was doing cocaine, <laughs> you're not gonna know who the junkie is unless yeah, you, you look yeah, real deep. deep. Like, yeah, you really don't know. know. Like, and that that's why I think a lot of people be like, "Oh, well, that guy's racist." I'm like, he could be or maybe not. You know what I mean? Like, he yeah. And mo- depending on where you grew up, right? Because a lot of like, racists. You grew up in the south. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, buddy. Like, you kind of have. There's more to it there. Yeah. It's not like growing up up in New England. And that was the other weird thing in New England is, is like there wasn't a lot of – we didn't have a lot of black kids in our school. Mm-mm. And it was really tough. But I will say when they did come to the school, they were the coolest kid in the school. Everybody oh, – well, like we were at that stage yeah. too where like rap music was becoming so big. but So I never saw it. Mm-hmm. Like I never saw really any form of racism uh-huh. – it was more picking on underprivileged or poverty. Of course, yeah. And so, like, when I came here and I saw it one time in a um, in an airport, mm-hmm. and I had sat down away from my terminal to eat some food because I didn't want to eat near everybody. Mm-hmm. And there was an older white guy that came and he sat like the first chair that would be next to like check in or whatever. And an older black lady was in a wheelchair, and it was a middle aged black guy that was wheeling her over to the the area and it was the handicap area is on the other side of his chair, the white guy's chair. Mm-hmm. So the guy sat her right there and he started freaking out. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of just sitting there like watching, like, I don't understand what's going on right now. <laughs> and he's like yelling. And then he gets the manager, mm-hmm. which is a, uh, another, it's a black lady. Right. And he's like, your employee was rude to me. He said this, he said this. And he was like making stuff up. And I was just kind of sitting there like, you got to be frigging kidding yeah. me right now. So I got up and I walked over and I was like, man, that's not true. Right. And I looked at him. I was like, dude, you should be ashamed of yourself. I was like, first of all, <laughs> we all have assigned seats. Right. So you're getting on the plane at the same time, no matter what. No matter what. I was what. like, stop being a piece of shit. And he just looked at me and I was, and I gave the lady, the old lady a hug. And I said, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, you have to deal with that. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, you're disrespectful. Yeah. And I just, so I sat there. And I just sat there mm-hmm. and I wouldn't move. I wouldn't go over until they called my gate because I was like, no, I'm going to sit here the whole time. Because if you say something to this old lady, I'm going to ruin your day. Right. I'm just going to just berate you until you can't handle it anymore. Right. And the guy that worked there came over and shook my hand and said he appreciated it. And I was just like, this is fucking weird. Like I'd never seen it before in my life. I knew it. I've right. watched it on TV. I see all this stuff. But then you see it and it's somebody's grandmother. It's not like some young kid that they're just being, oh, he could be because he maybe thinks he's a punk. Mm-hmm. And I could like make an excuse in my head. This was as blatant shit as you could see. And I was just like, dude, this is not all right. And we're in a public place and you're like totally okay with not like you're going to lie your way right through this. <laughs> and that was that was a hard day. Like I remember coming home and telling my wife like, yeah, I felt weird. Like maybe, uh, maybe I'm not supposed to get involved. Maybe right. I don't go say anything because like who the fuck are you, right. Mr. Token White Guy? You're going to come over here and try to tell. <laughs> but I was just like, I don't know what to do. Like I, that's that New England in me. Like yeah, I'm going right. to step into the situation every time. Probably going to regret it when I turn 40. Like one of these days it's going to catch me. But it was a weird day for me out here. And you know, and I've been out here for 10 years. I haven't seen a lot of it mm-hmm. even. And that's a good thing. I'm glad. And I, But it happens every day. Well, we don't have a lot of black people out here either. So it's hot it's, it's, yeah, it's, shit yeah, out it's, here, it's not, bro. It's not just everywhere, you know. Um, the, the other thing about it, though, too, is like, um, you know, nowadays everybody has a voice, you know. Um, so, you know, stuff that we think is racism may not be racism and stuff that is like somebody might not say it. I mean it's it's a lot it's a lot to deal with nowadays, you know what I mean? Mm. Just because of like social media and stuff and you know how that influences people, you That's know? making people weird. Yeah. Like you were saying like not going to playing with kids. Mm-hmm. This is the same shit with social media is 
It's also making people not want to get into relationships earlier. Yeah. They're, they're pushing it further and further. They're not getting married till later. Like, mm-hmm. I see all that happening. We're going to have a bunch of freaking 60-year-old parents watching their kids get their license here pretty or, soon. Or, you know, they're not going to get married. That's the thing. Yep. Um, You're going to have a bunch of depressed old people yeah. running around here. Sun and City I- fun to be lit. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're not like, I'm telling you, that's what I, I noticed out here that's really bad. Um, a lot of people don't, they're not dating or they're not in a relationship. And I was like, ooh. I mean, because the thing about it, the thing is like, because I met, I mean, we know a lot of people, right? And they're they're not married at all. Or they have just one, you know, they have a kid, but they're not married. And uh, it's tough when you get older and trying to get into a relationship. Because really, you're looking for like a death partner by then. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and you're setting your ways. Yeah, because yeah, that's why you're just looking for a death partner. Because you're like, I got my own little way. They, you got your own little things that you do every day that you like. You know what I mean? And you do that every day. And really, the person just, hey, you know, y'all go get dinner together, basically, and then you know, go to sleep. I don't know, but that's it. Like, because like when yeah, you, you get you need older, that time to form the bond. You do. Like, you need you need that, and you kind of need the. Uh, the chaos, you know what I mean? Um, that's what kind of like, you know, makes your relationship strong, you know? But like being like not with somebody and then trying to get into a relationship when you get older, I feel like that's going to be very difficult. Like if I ever got a divorce, I don't, I would never get married again. Mm-mm. I'd be like, oh, well, that was it. I had, I, hey, I tried really. You no, know, I'm turning <laughs> into a recluse. The only time you're going to hear me is on this. That's it. I've you know? said that many times. <clears throat> like it's just because it's, it's weird. I'm yeah. not I'm not at that stage in my life anymore where I'm willing to pretend to be something to at least appease you and to, I could trap you. But that's what like, I'm saying I with everybody else that that's shit. my age that's not married. I'm like, yo, y'all are never going to get married. Because if I got a divorce, I wouldn't marry nobody. So you're not going to marry nobody. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm already married. And I would tell you, like, yeah, that would, I'd, I'd be like, nah. I'm, Social I'm, media was the distraction, bro. You know, I'd They be, just yeah. had enough time. Because what are you going to do if you don't have social media, right? Mm-hmm. And ain't shit on TV, mm-hmm. and you're sitting at home, and you just sit on the couch. What are you doing? You're gonna read a book, right. or you can go to the gym, or you're gonna go to the bar, yep. or you can go try to meet some chick because right. you're bored right. out of your goddamn mind. Yes. And now it's like, well, let me just talk to this chick over here or this dude over here in China. Let me talk to this person over here in Nebraska. Right. Like, I, you, it could be anywhere. It could be five of these towns here. You could mm-hmm. have a person in every town. Mm-hmm. But it's scary because everybody wants to ghost everybody now. And it's like, oh, well, it's all, we all know it's just a hookup. So it doesn't matter. It's not like we're up front. But then all of a sudden you're 40. I'm telling you, that's a lonely feeling. And I try to tell people that because, like, yo, it's really good to have a family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Because you feel like you have a purpose in life. It feels good to have somebody that wants you to come home. Yeah, because think about if you had nobody. I mean, it's like, eh. It's funny when it gets annoying, like, God damn, I can't do nothing. We don't want to know where we're going, what we're yeah. doing, what we're And then I'm like, Then when she gone, yeah, no, you're like, finally. I'm walking through somebody. this house. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know, like, I'm like, should you I clean? Do it yourself. You clean like, the house up. You're like, I'm bored. Yeah. Like, I don't want to invite nobody over. I just clean the house. Yeah, that's. And that's how I feel like when if I was single, I'd be like, is that how it feels like to be single? Mm-hmm. Oh, hell no. <laughs> That's why you see single dudes after about 30, 35, they start weird. Weird, yeah. Because, like, I'm telling you, it's, it, it, you, you know, you going home and, and chilling by yourself. That, that's, that's okay when you're young, you know what I mean? But when you get older and you don't have nobody, I mean, that, that becomes lonely, you know what I mean? And then you see your friends yeah. got the kids and we're there throwing the football in the front yard. You're like, I guess I should be doing that, huh? You know? But, or you go, or it's the buddy that, like, hangs out with the, friend that's got the family mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like becomes like the weird uncle that's like always <laughs> the weird the uncle it's like oh jim's here uncle jim's here again and you know the kids are like oh uncle jim's here oh, oh my gosh yeah <laughs> shit so i will tell people that like yo y'all y'all should probably look into getting a relationship and don't and be so that. damn stubborn don't be yeah. break a little bit for somebody i'm Let, telling you because you com- know you might like it eventually mm-hmm, because it comes it not having that you know interaction every day I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I would do with myself if I went that long. You know, I could go with breaks, you know, with not being with my wife. That's fine because you know, I'm still married. You know what yeah. I mean? But like, you get like, yeah, you don't know what to do with yourself. You're just like, you just become like a little hermit and, you know. And you like, realize how much you care about him too because you got like calling him. Like, what you doing? What you doing? You just, you just sitting around? Yeah. Huh. This sucks. All right. And then you get home though. 
It's always a fight, though. Yeah. Not maybe not a fight, but like when I come home after being gone, like within the first five hours, you just gotta get it out the way. That's it. Yeah, That's it's because like right. she's been like totally in her mode, mm -hmm. and nobody's been telling her what to do. I've been doing my own little routine on the road or whatever, and then you right. come home and it's like, oh no, we gotta confine all this shit again. It can be a little bit of a headbutt. It is. I mean, it's it's was hard. It, was it hard for you guys when you went to the league? No. No, nah, not really. How I mean, old were you when you went to the league? Two. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't. I mean, it's it's a, life's hard though. Having a, it's hard having a relationship. It is hard to keep it together. Hard, hard that, all that stuff is like because you don't really get to that. I feel like after ten years of being with somebody, that's when y'all really get like a good feel for each other. Because mm -hmm. then you kind of know like what they like, what they don't like. You kind of know what they're doing. Their How long you been with her? Like 14 years. Yeah, I'm on 12 with Crystal. Yeah. So that's, it's weird to think that it, it goes so fast, too. It does. So you say that number out loud and you're like, 12, 12. 14. That's a lot of years. That's a lot of years. It's yeah. almost half your life. It really was like for, for me, because like we met in high school, like my junior year in high school, like right, our, right at the beginning of the junior year. That's and cool. So, and when we met or whatever, oh, I gotta tell y'all the story about how we met too. It's, it's I'm telling you, we had like a we had one of those little fairy tale ones. Like, so That's I gotta why tell you, got a show now. Yeah, I know, right? That's oh, why shit. I was like, yo, we we should go, you know, make the you know do a YouTube show. So we got a YouTube show hanging with the Flemings. Yeah, um, go subscribe to that on YouTube, and yeah. I'll post the links and everything. We'll yeah, talk about that some more. Yeah, y'all should, cause it's it's good, cause it's like a it's it's a family thing, and we do we do tons of different, you know, we just do lots of different stuff. I feel but. like y'all would be doing some of that stuff. Without the cameras on, too. We do do that. That's, that's what we do. Yeah. That's why we. That's why we got a YouTube channel. Cause like, we got a couple other ones coming out. You know, um, we don't do like the like we have a challenge one out. Of course, we probably wouldn't do the challenge like that. You know what I mean? Like in real life, like just eat food. You know, but uh, but um, like the other stuff, we we always that's that stuff we always do. So mm -hmm. as a family, you know. But um, um, and then we will have like some workout things coming out uh, pretty soon. That that's stuff we do all the time. I mean, these right. are like real things that we actually do plus my content is actually like it's just good like fun content to watch you mm -hmm. know what i mean um because i see a lot of family channels out there and they're they're you know they're family whatever but ours was you know like real like we've been together before the youtube channel came out this wasn't like oh we got together then we started a youtube channel the next year you know what i mean like we've been together forever and y'all are legitimately happy people too it's yeah not, and like, our fake. kid and our kids, you know, 10 years old now, you know what I mean? Like, this ain't like a little, you know, a lot of the YouTube channels have a baby in the thing. Like, they're yeah. just newborn. Like, they're just basically starting their life. I mean, our kid's 10. Like, we've been through so much already. And then we have a three-year-old now, too. So now you get to see a little baby that we're dealing with. You know, well, he's not little, little now. But, no. you know, he's walking now. But, you know, and all this stuff, you know, and talking and all that. But he's still little, though. He's only three. So it's like, you know, you get to see that. And then our big, our older child too. So um, that's why it's a good mix because you get the kids that play the video games like our ten year old. You know what I mean? And you get the kids that uh, we're just teaching how to, you know, just do basic things. You know, <laughs> with the three year old. You know what I mean? Um, so you you get that whole dynamic of our lives. You know what I mean? Because like the baby thing is just cool. Like videotaping that. Problem is, is it's a baby. It's not gonna do nothing. Right. <laughs> It doesn't move. Like, they just sit there, and you come and feed them, and then you come and change them, and you come and put them in their little clothes, and that's it. They're really helpless beings when at that stage. Yeah. Until they start really walking and stuff, it ain't doing much. You know what I mean? So I was like, ah, I kind of skipped that. So now you got three-year-olds. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I wish we probably would have started when we was two, but hey, you know, three, not, not too far off. So <laughs> He's moving around, though. That's, I mean, it's oh, not yeah, boring with he, that. Yeah, um, and then the cool thing about it, he's, he talks and stuff, so it's you get that whole dynamic. But he's he got ADHD. I, he going to be the kid we're going to have to put on medicine. He is great. I mean, we got another one coming out soon. Yo, we doing a challenge on this next one? Um, it's... I'm telling you, like it's ridiculous. Like he's just every he's, he's like in it at the beginning, and then at the end of the show, you're like, "Where's the kid at?" You know, <laughs> like yeah, he's he's a mess. Um, he's everywhere. That kid cannot sit still to save his life. Cannot. That's, he's just that's a, good though. He's just he's 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 all you know what. And he, the funny thing about him, he's really cute. He's just a cute kid. So like him having ADHD. <laughs> I'm telling you, he, you, you already, I already know he does. Like when he came out the womb, right? And I, and by the way, I birthed my own child. I did do that. Got a videotape of that. Might need to put that on. We'll put that on the YouTube. Uh, Dude, wow, well, hey, yeah, yeah, you know, like, That's but wild, you see it from the, the, you see it from like behind angles. So like from behind her. Oh, so you like getting a handoff, like, yeah, 
Yeah, the doctors helped you me like, like a turn him, you know what I mean? Turned around with no, him. No, I was uh, oh my goodness. Oh my like when he came out, Bro, I was like, oh snap. I'm already scared thinking about it. Yeah, that, huh? that was that one's crazy because um the way it opens up, like, oh it's nuts. It's like what? How is that even possible? It's like, you know what I mean? I'm telling you it's so but I'll come back that next week on the podcast and just be like <laughs> No, I, I wouldn't know what to say, y'all. See, but I already had one before that. No, right. I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't birth him, and then the I didn't deliver him, and then the um um I had dogs, and like we'd we'd uh, um have to do um you know like they would birth you know dogs and puppies and stuff like that, so we had to whelp the litter. So that that's why I was used to it already. Mm-hmm. I was already kind of used to that whole like uh, giving birth type stuff because we had to do that with our puppies, and I'm, we're sitting there, they're coming out, got to clean them, cut the umbilical cord. So you're kind of used to that. So with her, it wasn't. That's scary. Like the first time, I was like, "Oh no, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even look over." Like, "Oh my no, uh, uh, that's that's so creepy." It is. It's kind of like, you know, they, it's beautiful, but it, it's like weird at the same time. It is so weird. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't tell you to do it because it, it is. It's just the weirdest thing you have ever seen in your life. Like, but you gotta look. Yeah, but when I got the burp, I'm like, people don't even understand. Like their head when they come out, it's like super wrinkly. Like. Like until it hits air is when it fold molds. But when they come out, they're basically it looks oh, it is so odd. It looks like an alien coming. And then it's like <sighs> then the air comes oh, in and it's like oh, it is oh, so man. creepy when their head was like it's like rolls and rolls of like skin. And then when the air hits, it just pops out. Like I'm telling you, it's, it's like, like popping a snapple cap. I'm telling you, then you're like, what? Cause like when it's coming, you're like, oh my baby's gonna be messed up. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to tell you, like... Stewie Griffin! No! no, Yeah, you're like, oh, something's wrong with my baby. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord. And then he comes out, and it's like... You know, like, he comes into, like, a person. You're like, oh, oh, he's okay. But it happens instantly, too. Like, when the air hits, it's like... It is so crazy. Yeah, because when they first come out, you're like, oh, I'm about to throw up. It looks terrible. Well, I was freaked out yesterday, because I thought it was still going to be a blob. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. It was a full shape of, like, a baby... And it was, then it started like kicking its arms mm-hmm. and its leg. And I was like, wait a minute. I thought it was still supposed to be like, and she's like, no, no, it's like formed. Like yeah. it's going to just grow from here on out. And I'm like. They get bigger and bigger. And I knew he had ADHD. Shit. This is how you know if your baby had ADHD. When they're in the belly, if if they all they do is backflips and front flips in her stomach, I'm telling you, that's a sign. Another sign is when you when they come out, if you swaddle them, right? Because they get swaddled. So the, the lady wraps them up in a blanket. If you try to clean them and then try to swaddle them again and they don't stay swaddled, oh, they got ADHD. Because my son <laughs> did not get swaddled. Babies usually get wrapped up. He he got wrapped up one time when he was first born, and that was it. He was never been wrapped after that. He never We could never wrap a blanket around him after that. Never. Like, to hold him and stuff, he never liked it. He Then he started crying because he didn't like being confined. He did. No, it was never. No, after that, we haven't swaddled him after that. He got swaddled up. The day one. <laughs> so you got, wait a day minute, one. so you got three and ten? Yep. Three so like, ten. what, seven seven years bar? Mm-hmm. That's what my sister and I are. Yeah. And so. Your older son's in for it, buddy. Why you say that? It's tough. But, especially when they hit about five. Oh, yeah, and then he got to take care of them. Well, yeah, because it's, it's, <laughs> it's more them. of an annoyance thing, because they're like, oh, I want that. Because you'd be like getting some food, like, oh, I want that too. And you're like, and then your mom or your dad's like, well, just get your brother. Just get get it for him. And you're like. No, dude, get up and you get it for him. He's like, already, I'm getting my own food right yeah. now. I don't want to get him food too. Right. And then it just, and then they want to do everything you do, and you're just, just a little bit older, but it's a good age at the same time because you're super protective. Yeah. Because like, bro, I'd destroy somebody for messing with my sister. Right. Like you just didn't do it, and then all my friends were the same way. Like if mm. you even went near, her, it was a danger for you. And so like it was great in that sense. Like she was. She felt like a celebrity by the time she even hit high school. Like, everybody already knew who she was. She was good. But it's tough when you're, like, the oldest and you're – that's a big gap. So it it's is. not like you're making the same mistakes roughly in the same time. It's like, no, no, no. I made – like, I tell her all the time, like, oh, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Like, I did that shit. Don't do that. Well, you know what the the thing is? Is I kind of like having it, like, a little bit apart like how we have it. Mm. That's somebody to watch the kid. You know, when you have two at the same time, around oh, yeah. the same time, you ain't got nobody to watch them. No, nah, you're, you're absolutely right. My you mom got I mean? some free babysitting out of me. You got free babysitting, sure. yeah. And I was like, all right, mom, that, leave that, the house. I'm going to go smoke a cigarette outside. Yeah, that's the good thing about <laughs> it. The only bad thing, though, is, like, shoot, if they were both, like, nine and ten, we'd be chilling. You know what I mean? Oh, it'd be, yeah, yeah but then it'd it's... Be beautiful. I had that mm-hmm. too because I had a brother that was less than a year. He passed now, mm-hmm. but um, he was less than a year old 
when I was I was a year old. He was just born. Born, yeah. And uh, we were good kids. But I will say right now, like if him and I got together and wanted to get into mischief right. or started to, it was a lot worse. Yeah. Because like two brains is way better than one, <laughs> buddy boy. Like we get into some shit. You know what though? He, uh, my oldest one, he's really docile. He's he's a quiet, calm kid. So I, I don't really have to worry about him much. Is he the, he he just he just does his same routine. You know, uh, eats the same type of food. He he doesn't eat candy. That's good. Um, yeah, so he's he's very easy to deal with. He was God bless us with him when we when we had him too, because um, he was easy to deal with. Like in college, and I'm doing all this stuff, like going to school, playing football, and then I got to take care of a baby. Like luckily, I had a baby that was didn't cry. You know, he only cried if he was hungry or wet. You you already knew why he was crying. It wasn't mm-hmm. like oh, I wonder why he's crying. He wasn't that kid you got to hold and like shh. You didn't have to do none of that. Mm-mm. And when it's time to go to bed, he'd be whoop, knocked out. So. It was, yeah, we got blessed with him. Hopefully you have that baby. Cause that, that's the trick baby, though, right? Because then the next yeah, one's the, baby, the one yeah, that's the next like, one. Yeah, you! That's the second one that like we have. But he is night and day difference from our first one. <laughs> like our first one, I'm telling you, it was, I went to I went to school, work, and then took care of him throughout the day. And I was able to do that at like 20 years old. It's because, I mean, I was only Jeez. able to do that because he didn't like, you were mature, he, dude. No, but he didn't give me problems. Like he yeah, literally, still, like he, I also said, shit. he gave me, he gave me, they gave me the perfect baby. This, so I'm talking about perfect. Like didn't ever cry. Like he's just he, if he was hungry, that was it. He gave him the food. He would, and he, whoop, that was it. And then he you know get wet and and then and then potty training. Yo, we didn't even teach him how to potty train. Like that's what I'm saying. Like we had the perfect little baby. Like he, he was potty trained. He never had an accident. Still to this day, he's ten years old. Never had an accident. That's what I'm saying. When we had him. It was like, it was just, just, just I don't know. That's Blue crazy, though. <laughs> I mean, crazy. the fact that you would almost think, like, the opposite. Like, it would be a harder, he would have struggled growing up because it's chaos. Like, there is, even, oh, you know even what, the structure, though, I that's who, chaos. Like, you, you know what, though? I think he is because they don't have somebody, um, like, he had entertained himself. And so, like, it was more like, oh, I'm just going to play with myself and, you know, play my cars and. Play my little games and and that's it, you know. My and, niece is crazy though, and she yeah. does that. Is she she's by herself. It. Bro, I walked in a room last night and she had the the Barbie um, RV going in one area that's got a pool that comes mm-hmm. out of the RV. She had that going, a whole Barbie house, and then another Barbie thing, and she had like a full town thing going, and she had a movie on, and she was dancing to music. And mm-hmm. I walked in, she's four, and she's like, "Hey, Uncle Key, come play Barbies," and I was like, "Dude, your room is legit." Like you got so much cool shit in here. This is amazing. And she dude, she just all over the place, like doing stuff. And she is completely entertaining herself. She's active, busy, yeah. but she is like we told her last night we were having a baby and she started jumping up and down on the couch running across the house. I'm so excited. I'm so I'm happy. So, I'm like, but is she, you're four. But does she like, get it does she do that with her parents though? Like they does she bother them a lot though? No, dude, she's a really good kid, but she's she's Mm-hmm. You know, like always got to be doing. Like they took her to Disney on Ice last weekend before the like intermission in the mm-hmm. middle. She was ready to go. No, oh. she was like, "All right, cool. This is cool. Let's we good. We good. That's all I wanted. The, the, the part you really want to see is coming, and then the, no, like, that's the, all I want to see, mom. She's like, "No, nah, we're good. Yeah, Let's we're go." Good. No, like, my son, like he he he's not like nah. He he's just a mess. Like the second one, he's he's everywhere. Like he yeah. He's I mean he gets that. Oh, and it's just a span for like two seconds, and then it's the sushi, then it's something else. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm like, what? How did, I mean, my kid has the craziest energy in the world. I literally like want to figure out they could take something and spin his blood down and start injecting people with it. Because I'm like, yo, if you had that kind of energy, yo, it is crazy. Yo, you you're not the one that day. says that to me, is it? Somebody mm. says that shit to me all the time. If they could figure out how to bottle mm-hmm. what you have, mm-hmm. like your energy during the right. day. You would be rich. Well, you'd be rich. Be mm. dummy. I mean, it would be. I mean, it would just be crazy. Just like astronomical. Rich but it sucks like, sometimes. No, no. For you, like this times I walk in a place and like everybody don't want to be at that no, level. No. And so like I'm like crawling. Yeah. Like I gotta leave and I gotta get but in see, my truck. But see, but you still don't have as much energy as my son does. I'm telling I'm you, thirty five, bro. That shit wears yeah, out. Yeah, after I'm telling you, I would love to bottle up. You got to see my kid. Anybody that has ever watched him, they're just like, yo, this kid, it's so crazy. He's not bad. 
They just, just don't shut off. It just no, he doesn't shut off. He's like watching the game, building like the car, making like a ramp, and then doing this and then doing that, and you know he's over here, he's over there, he's watching this channel. Like I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like. No, would you rest? Is he a sports kid too? Does he like sports? Man, he does anything, everything. Anything he touches, I mean, he's over there clipping his fingernails. He's three. I mean, he's doing whatever. Like, he's just. Just trying to my find nails something. Long. Let me, uh, and I'm like, what the? <laughs> what the heck? I'm telling you, it's like. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got to bottle up his stuff. I'm telling you, you could do. You, boy, you could work. I live forever. Yo, yo, he, <laughs> he literally gets up at like six in the morning. He don't go to bed till like nine. You know what I mean? Like, yo, he has energy level. And he's like that. For the whole day, I'm telling you, I, the crazy thing with mine is my mom and dad say like that because I'm like, mom, was I like this? They're like, no, 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 he was never like that energy level that your son has. It is ridiculous. Like, never been seen ever. Like, I didn't have it. My sisters even. I was when gonna they say saw, you have sisters, right? Yeah, and they they have kids too, and they're even like, no, his energy level, like, yo, it's it's crazy. I think he's gonna be good at sports. I'm t- I, football and like basketball, just sports in general. I think because I think because his energy. He's always up. Like I think it's all. I mean, he's gonna well, be alert's one of the biggest right. things in that. You know that. Mm-hmm. I think he's always gonna be like just ready to go. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, give me the ball. Give me the ball. Like, cause he's always, cause his energy level is crazy. I was like, man, I was, I couldn't have been that bad of a kid. Like, he's not a bad like kid like that. But he, but having it, yo, like he that. don't slow down. Like, it's like it, the reason why it's bad right now is because he's three, so I have to watch him. You know what I mean? Like, if he was a like eleven year old or whatever, you know what I mean? Like. You know, 13, it's not bad. You know, he'll go play football side or something like that, you know? But it's because I have to watch him. It's like, oh, my God. It drains everybody. Everybody that watches him is like, holy cow. Like, Just that age alone. Mm-hmm. Like, I spend a day with my the, the three- or four-year-old niece, and... But he don't take no naps, nothing. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'll be asking, like, hey, uh, you going to take a nap? She's like, mm-mm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. And then my wife's over there like... <laughs> Sleeping on the couch, I'm like, shit, now I'm stuck yeah. watching her, like, by myself. This yeah. is even worse, because this is where the double energy drain yeah. comes in. Yeah. But what do you got? Who you got next weekend? For the Chiefs game? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I got to go with the Chiefs, but... I'm, you, want, you want a little inside information? What's the inside information? Well, the Simpsons, I'm just going to come out here and say it right now. Mm-hmm. Simpsons, they, they, they know the future. They do. All right. And the Simpsons have already predicted mm-hmm. in an episode that the 49ers mm-hmm. win a Super Bowl in Miami. Oh. Now. What, that, what, city, what, what episode is that? You uh, have to look that up. We'll look it up when we're done. Because it is, uh, whoever it was in the podcast the other day was telling me that. And Yo, I was, it's been weird. The Family Guy is made by the Simpsons too, right? No, no, no. What? Mm-mm. No? They're no. not the same people? No, Futurama is made by... The same people from The Simpsons. Oh. And so is, there's like a show on Netflix, and I want to say there's something else too. But Family Guy makes uh, American Dad mm-hmm. and The Cleveland Show. The show, yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they stopped The Cleveland Show. I used to like that shit. I it was know. a good show. That shit made me laugh, but. But I, you know, I mean, because Family Guy also has like uh, show like stuff in there too where they like. Know the future, but the Simpsons, they it's been weird how they've been. They hit, they hit on a few. I don't know if it's because they just do so much that obviously, I don't one know, hit. dude. Like, the, even the one with like Mark McGuire all juiced up hitting home runs, and mm-hmm. then like they hit a satellite in the sky that's yeah. like listening to everybody's conversation, and then like two years later, they come out that they're doing that, doing shit. That, yeah. You got Trump winning the election. Like, there's a bunch, it's not just like one or two things. No, they it's don't like, have, yeah, and you know, like, even with that, um. We'll see though. It, they had a lot. They just have like random things that they just know. No, you heard it here first when you see it on Monday after the Super Bowl. You know Bowl. why though? The reason why they would win though is because they just have a better team. They have an all around better team than the, the defense uh, is yeah. really good on that. They team. have a good defense mm-hmm. and then um, good offense, you know, and stuff like that. So that's the only thing I could see why you know the Chiefs would have a hard time because uh, if the Chiefs had a better defense, but you know what? The problem with the the Chiefs though is. Um, this is what you run into, is if you're deep. Well, all right. This is why they went to the Super Bowl. Let me tell you the reason why the Chiefs went to the Super Bowl. When I was there, we used to play man to man, right? Um, you can't play man to man in the in the league for the whole game. It's just impossible. But that's what we used to do. We used to go to cover zero with no middle field safety, so everybody's matched up zero, zero blitz, all out blitz. You ain't got no help. And we would be up like 28 points and they would go zero blitz. I'm like, Coach, why would we run that? That 
That doesn't so even what, make like sense. Run a zone or something. No, like man. That, no, we run. Z- no, no. I yo, mean, we like, should run a zone. Run yeah. A zone, right. Yeah. Just you see, you keep everybody in front of you. Make the tackle. Yeah. Just hold out. your lead. Right. That's it. Right. Makes sense to you, right? Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah, and I'm not. Yeah, as keen. It's on not that. rocket science. I'm telling you that. And um, yeah. So they wouldn't do that. And then we would get, um, you know, scored on random. We'd be like, coach, why are we running zero? Like, why are we running man? Like, who? For what? What is the purpose? And like, and they would, and he would literally stick to that. And then Patrick Mahomes came along. And what happened to the defense? They became the worst defense in NFL, right? Um, when uh, when Patrick Mahomes came, because they would score a bunch of points. Well, that means you got to hold the lead because everybody has more time to um, to score. You know what I mean? So if, even though Patrick was throwing, you know, 50 touchdowns, right. guess who got fired at the end of the year? The defensive coordinator. You know what I mean? Because you can't run man and have a bunch of points. If you score more points, that means the offense, their offense gets the ball back every time. So, yeah, you might have scored, you know, 35 point, points, but that other team also had that opportunity to uh, score points too. You know what I mean? And so um, they couldn't hold anybody because you're playing man-to-man the whole game. It's like, Coach, can we not run zero? I mean, not zero, but some type of zone. Can we not run cover two, cover three? And then at the end of that year, they went to they played uh, Tom Brady, you know what I mean, in the AFC mm-hmm. Championship and lost or whatever, right? Because, you know, but that was like D4, you know, sides type thing. But And everybody, and then they got fired. That was a great that. game. But they got fired after becoming fired, you know what I mean? Everybody, fired. After um, um, going to the AFC Championship game. Isn't that weird? And to be completely honest about that game, had the coin flip gone the other way, mm-hmm. they would have yeah, won. They probably would have won. Because that game was, I said it before it started, this is the Super Bowl. But you see what I'm saying? That was a great game. But the whole yeah. thing was, they went to the AFC Championship and, then they and got fired. fired. Mm-hmm. How you get fired? On your day off? Yo, yo. Stealing boxes? Think about that. That's why I was like, people, I was like, I saw, I've been, I've been telling people for the longest and then when they got fired, you know, because they used to play for the Chiefs and like, and I would tell them, I was like, yo, they're just... You know, everyone have the right coaching right there. You know what I mean? Because if you gotta, you gotta mix it up. You gotta change up the thing. You can't just run man the whole time. How is that possible? That's so annoying. I don't even know how it is possible. It keeps <laughs> happening, but it don't matter. But yeah, I, I, I'm telling you though, man. The the Chiefs though they have an opportunity to win. I don't know if the defense is going to be able to hold because you score so many points. That means you give the their opposing offense more time to score. Right. Um. So that and the problem with uh with uh, San Fran they can score, and so if if the Chiefs don't score, um, San Fran is really good at running the ball, so they can run the clock out. And they got a good defense, so if they stop the Chiefs and they get the ball back, you know what I mean. So because if you saw the game last week. Um, Mitch McCullough was up like 17 0, 17 to 7. Yeah. You know what Tennessee I mean? Tennessee was yeah, up. Yeah, so they the were up. Yeah. Then they just they turned the heat on. Yeah, yeah. They, Mahomes is great. He, I yeah. mean, that's. No, their whole that, offense is really, really good. Yeah. I mean, you could you can't really stop them and slow them down. The thing is, is if you can get a couple of possessions more, their defense just has a hard time because if they don't get the stops out the gate, see, you really have to make sure you get enough stops, you know, on defense to win the game. That's all you need. It just comes down to. How many stops can we get out of this game? If you can do that, you're going to be money. I mean, you should be – I would I'd be more excited to play for the Chiefs now than when I was before because they score so many points that all I know You'd is – You'd have more opportunity yeah, on the field. Well, all I know, though, is I, I could go make a play, right, and the game will probably be over with because they, they just won't be able to keep uh, – sustain them, you know, the drives, you know. So that's the only good thing because, like, if you can score 35 points, right – well, oh, I got, I got, you, you're, you're comfortable making plays now. You see what I'm saying? Because, hey, I'll make a play. They're never going to come back. You know right. what I mean? It takes that pressure yeah, off. Yeah, it, it takes the pressure off you. But I, I think a lot of people think about it as pressure. When I'm like, no, no, no. Them being able to score all the time should be like, whew. We, <laughs> we don't have to do too much. I can go out there and just be me. You know? The worst is when you have a team, you can't score no points. And then all the pressure's on you to hold every time. Because I was part of the Cardinals when, we got, when I got drafted. And we couldn't score. Like actually, we started off like five and zero, right? We beat the Patriots at Gillette. That's when they had uh, everybody. Remember. They had everybody on their team too. They had uh, a Wells Walker too was there still. I mean, they had everybody. Julian, that was I mean, a big deal. We hadn't lost a game at home in a long time. No, too. we was we was doing good, and then uh, we uh, I mean, our quarterback got hurt, and then it was, it was all downhill after that. But um, but we would we played. That's when Tim Tebow was playing. We played them the Jets, right? He was at the Jets. At that time, and uh, um, um, so he came in because we were stopping their quarterback, 
and we could not score to save our lives. We couldn't even get a field goal range. I think the, the score was like seven to nine or something like nine to seven that game or something crazy, like six to seven or something we lost, you know, and we couldn't get enough. We couldn't even get a, enough in range just to kick a field goal just to win the game and go home. It was so pathetic. Our safety had like three interceptions that game. I mean, it was ridiculous. Like the teams were so bad. The offenses was, I mean, it was like, it was just throw up on the field. It was just crazy. It was like, what is this? Like, Oh, this is not the NFL, is it? Like it was, it was horrendous. But we couldn't score, and that, you know, Patrick Mahomes being that good of a quarterback, I think they're going to take, you know, they're going to take really good care of him as long as you keep some weapons around him. But you never know. I mean, look over at Rodgers. You, you, you they ain't going to do Rodgers like that. I mean, they ain't going to do Patrick Mahomes. You like better Rogers. hope not. But Rodgers, you know why? Is special. Let me tell you why. He's Andy a great Reed. Yeah. Andy Reid doesn't believe in it. Andy Reid believes in having guys around you to make you better because he doesn't want to be. Andy Reid wants to score points. He's a big offensive guy. Like. Mm -hmm. He's all offense. Like, defensive-wise, he never talked to the defensive players. Never. He just, he, you know what I mean, just let us do us and all that. You know, he never talked to us about anything. You know, if anything, it would be some praises or, you know, hey, guys, let's get going, you know. And that was it. He would he would, he would just never all, you know, over there. And because uh, he's so big on offense, he's always about let's just outscore him, you know what I mean? Because the thing is, it's like he, I think he likes to do that because he doesn't want to get in a shootout, you know what I mean? Because it becomes hard if you can't score very many points. It, that games, you know, are dictated, you know, by just, you know, like a couple points. So if you can't score, that's going to be a long – I mean, you ain't going to stay in the league very yeah. long if you can't score points, you know. So – What was your favorite team to play on out of the two? Uh, Which one was you more fun for weird? you? No, I played for Jacksonville for you too. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Florida. Hey, Oof. I will tell you though, <laughs> I actually like Jacksonville's um, – um, like the the office, you know what I mean, in the back. Mm -hmm. Everybody was – The facility? The facility. Like everybody was really cool, like – I mean, they used to wash our car um, on, uh, like, was it Thursdays or Fridays? Florida's a wild car. place, bro. I mean, I mean, but it was, yeah. But they, they, they fed us all the time, always fed us. They had haircuts at the barbershop. God damn so. it, bro. I'm going to kill this kid. What happened? Because he fucking won't stop, bro. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so Jacksonville, they would they'd wash our cars, feed us, all that stuff. So, um, it was... That's why I like that place. You know what I mean? Um, they, they did a good job taking care of us. Oh, we gave you know had the barbershop and stuff too, and they would um, give us haircuts, all that stuff. So, and and our energy, the energy down there was pretty cool. Like going to practice wasn't very stressful. Um, they were all about you know having great energy that day and uh, making it a fun workplace. I just don't know why we just, you know we just didn't amount to very many wins. You know? Yeah. But other than that, <laughs> it was a good place though. So you like Jacksonville better out of the three? Uh, I'm. Mean, if we would have won, yeah, <laughs> Kansas City was the best, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, because we we did win games, went to the playoffs too. So, yeah, I mean, you can't. And at Kansas City, though, their fans are they got the best fans though by far. Um, just because like you know that tailgating, like remember what do they tailgate? What do you cook at tailgates? Barbecue. Yeah, barbecues, yeah. And what's Kansas City Kansas known City's for? Kansas City's known for barbecue. Barbecue, yeah. you know what I mean? So, like, we used to pull up in the um, to the stadium, yo, it would just smell like barbecue. Like, when you go to Kansas City games, it just, this, that, that outside in the parking lot, it just smells like straight barbecue, like, when you're driving. It's crazy. So, um, that's what I liked about that. Like, and then they have a bunch of barbecue restaurants. Mm -hmm. I mean, air, I mean, so many. And then, um, yeah, and, I mean, everybody was cool. Like, Kansas City is kind of like college. It kind of reminded me of, like, being at Oklahoma, because, you know, it's, it's just north of uh, Oklahoma, you know. So it's, it felt like college. like And people knew who I was, too. It's like, oh, cool. it's like a college feel. Like, it, it makes you really feel like you're in a college town. So I like Kansas City the most because, you know, they had good fans. Plus, we won. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and then, But I did like Jacksonville. I did like Jacksonville. I did, I did, I did enjoy myself in Jacksonville. They took really good care of us. They did. Like, even with... Uh, on away games, I was only like a. It's like my second year in the league or whatever, right? They would they would get your own room. We wouldn't have to partner up with nobody. They would get you really nice room. It was crazy. Like they did great. Like Jacksonville did. They did. They took care of your players. So really you're saying good. Gardner's living the life down there right now? Yo, Minshew is. He's having a good time. They did a. They did a phenomenal job. They did, and then you got you know you got you know um, Orlando. You know um, over there you got so you got Disney World and you can mm -hmm. go down to Miami and stuff. And then I went to Key West. I mean, so they have a whole bunch of stuff in Florida too. So that's why I like Jacksonville because it was kind of like it's cool. Like, they did a good job. They took care of us really well. So I've never been a big fan of Florida. Mm -mm. No, the humidity's crazy. I just don't like the state. 
They like to stay. It's fucking weird, bro. People get a little. They're. I went down there oh, a lot, like vacation and yeah. stuff, and I don't Is that know. The people were weird. I just didn't enjoy Florida as much, but I like. I like here. I like here. It's a little different. I don't like the. I, don't, I didn't like the humidity over there. It's crazy. Yeah, that's brutal. And Jacksonville actually rains like it's like one of the top uh, state cities in America that have the most rain because it actually rains like in the afternoon at two o'clock. Every and we day. call it afternoon showers, and yeah. it rains every day. And it's like for an hour. And they, we used to go to practice, and I'm be like, "Yo, I can't stand this because it would rain." And then we go to practice, and we're like, "Oh my goodness!" Like, every, and then so the humidity would just rise real yeah. quick because of the water. And then yeah, it would just be so humid at practice every day. But yeah, Jackson, oh man, the rain. Like people don't know that. And Jackson was one of the biggest actually cities in America too. People really, don't know that either. I didn't know that. Yeah, they were actually going to build Disney World there. Um, um, cause of the, the land size, it's huge. Like Jacksonville takes you an hour to get from the airport to like the beach. It's crazy in Jacksonville and you're in the same city. Think about that. You're in the same city and it took you an hour to get to the beach. That's how big it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? crazy. Yeah. Land, land wise, Jacksonville is like, like the, I think probably the biggest city in America. It's but you crazy. guys landed here though. Yeah. Well, you know, got drafted here. But you, so you came back though, right? I mean, well, you can't beat Arizona because the weather from October to like May is like beautiful. last year was like the whole year. Yeah, we, oh, didn't really, la- we really didn't have a bad like even the summer was. The summer nothing. was not that bad. Yo, I, I'm kind of nervous about that because I feel like then we'll have too many people move here. Yeah, but you know how Mother Nature plays. Like, oh yeah, come on over <sighs> and just turn the flames up on Yo, you. Yo, because the year. weather is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you got like Cali weather for like seven, eight months. That's crazy. So I mean, and it, it doesn't get cold, cold. Either. No, it like, never gets cold, cold. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a few nights you get into the thirties. Well, it's actually good it's though. Weird. But think about that's good because now you get to put a jacket on. Oh yeah, I got you hoodies. To, I get, get to, to wear. Get, finally. Dust off that jacket oh, and be like, man, oh yeah, I get, to, I get to wear a hoodie now. So. I, I'm telling you, like, here's it, and everybody's like, I was talking to some people that are from here, and they were like, yeah, this is like, it's weird. It's you know, we're actually huge compared to like when we when I when they you know when they were kids because they were mm-hmm. like, yo, this was a small you know place, you know, dude, this was orchard what we're sitting on right, right. now. There was nothing, nothing here farmland for miles, miles, yeah. They yeah. were like, yo, there was literally nothing there, and he's like, yo, it was like a hidden gem, like because like they would be outside playing, and the weather's like beautiful every day. But and I and I thought about this too. I was like, you know, growing up, ain't nobody ever talk about living in Arizona. Never, not on the radio. You never heard of anything. You never heard. I'm about still Arizona. waiting for the movie theater, the movie studios to <laughs> to put. I mean, it makes no sense. Mm-hmm. So you're in California, mm-hmm. right? It's more expensive. It's more crowded. Mm-hmm. Taxes are higher. We have no earthquakes, tons of land, properties cheaper, and our taxes are cheaper. Why wouldn't you be filming movies here? Oh, they did. They, just, they, they have, but they I'm felt, saying like studios. Like, the... like they got that new one over there in Scottsdale called Sneaky Studios mm-hmm. over like you go into one of the branches. Mm-hmm. But and what do they do over there at Sneaky Studios? I, don't, I have no idea. Been over there I just yet. know that that's what it is. Um, but it made sense to me. I was like, dude, why wouldn't you do it here? Mm-hmm. You could celebrities could shit you could airbnb a house for a month or two and just do the film and then get the hell out of here mm-hmm. like you could buy lots and put houses on them just to put celebrities in to come in and film whatever they wanted to right. like it's so much cheaper i it'll eventually happen yeah i'm worried i'm trying to figure it out because that's the one thing about arizona it's gonna get it's gonna get big well, with this is the other thing i think is gonna happen with all these different shows and and like companies wanting to hire mm-hmm. guys to do like the do podcasts and stuff like this, eventually it's just going to get to the point where companies are going to be like, it costs way too much money for us to have a studio. We're going to put a guy out there or two guys out there, and we're just going to ship the equipment to him, do it in his house. We won't have to pay for the property. We won't have to pay any of the overhead, and we'll send two guys out there and pay them to film him and do everything he does, and then we'll pay him money. You know, and we'll, they'll make more money off of the situation. That's what's coming. You know what? Well, we have some um, some people out here already that people don't know about that are like famous and stuff. There's mm-hmm. a lot of famous people that, who don't know that live out here. Oh yeah, know? but because um, I mean, it's a lot of viral stars too. Yeah. A lot of people from like the internet and internet, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, oh, there's a ton book, uh, um, just books and everything like that. I, that I randomly go across and they're like, "Oh yeah, I live in Scottsdale." And I'm like, 
what the, you know, they'll be on TV or internet. And I'm Stretch like, Stretch that money. I'm like, what? They live over here? The Bella twins from uh, the WWE, mm -hmm. you know, the twin girls, mm -hmm. they live out here in Scottsdale. You ever see that dude on the internet that like goes into libraries and he's like dressed up as like a nerd and he's like, you're in my, you're in my turf, bro. And mm -hmm. he like starts messing with people in libraries. Then he went into like, like ghetto hoods and like started like freestyling and he's like this big tall white guy mm -hmm. he's got like a bunch of viral videos like this he lives out here and my wife went to school with his wife that's crazy and like she's like yeah you know this dude like the thug librarian and all this i'm like oh yeah i've seen those videos she's like yeah that's this girl's husband he's making like yeah crazy, crazy it's money. stupid how much money those guys are making right. they're making more money than athletes some they of do. these guys they do make a lot of money yeah, that's why that's why i said that's why we're doing youtube so you gotta check out hanging out with the flemings yeah, hanging out we, with the yeah. flemings <laughs> on youtube we're gonna post the link subscribe yes. click that bell and they're posting stuff more than i am so i mean you guys have got a couple at least one to two things a week i've seen so far yeah we've been trying to keep it rolling so Coming out, we'll, we have funny stuff, you know, funny, cool things. We have educational things. Like, we try to get really just just everybody, you know what I mean? We're trying to, you know, we don't really want to focus, like, on a niche. Like, maybe the families is really our niche. It's yeah. basically what mm -hmm. it is. It's like the dad, the mom, the kids, like, because we have kids. So, you, you know, things you can do with the, your kids, um, workouts that y'all can do as a family. Um, just, just random stuff, you know. Plus, y'all be messing around on TikTok. Yeah, any, yeah. We have so I heard many you gotta things. watch out for TikTok, though, bro. I heard the Chinese government yeah, getting your data. Yeah, most that's likely. what you gotta watch. But uh, I'm gonna put my, you know, YouTube stuff on there so people will come on. <laughs> I gotta get on TikTok too. TikTok's rough though because it's dancing, and the one thing about TikTok, if you're a good dancer, you're gonna blow up on there. So like people that dance. I don't even know why they do anything else. Like, you should just be on TikTok. Like, if you're a dancer, like, if you dance like a background dancer, mm -hmm. you're crazy to do anything besides TikTok because, like, you will go viral so quick. And then you could put... Would you want to go viral, though? That's so scary to me. On YouTube? I mean, on TikTok? Oh, my God. I w That's the thing. One of the things I fear the most when I put out stupid clips because I'm like, if it ever just accidentally went viral because mm -hmm. I'm scared of what you got to do next like because you got to catch another one. And then you got to catch another one. And now you start stepping out of your comfort zone and doing shit that you probably wouldn't do because you know you got to well, catch that, another one. Well, see, you got to think and about it. I don't that. like that. Well, see, my thing is that's my whole play on everything. Like, um, That's why I did the family thing because it's, it's like everyday stuff. Right. So No, you're in a great lane. Yeah. Like when you say we do everything and anything, that's kind of more or less what I do over here mm -hmm. where it's kind of like I'm like I have a rapper. Hopefully we have him on Saturday. Because he's got an album dropping in another week, and they're going to do a big show downtown. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have a country guy on after that, and I'm going to have a fighter on after that. And then I'm going to be stupid with my buddy for five episodes after that. And we talk about everything and random stuff. Yep. But it's hard because how do you target an audience? You know, How do you target an audience that you're you, just being random? Yeah, if you're random, it's hard to target. target you got to be yourself. Audience. But the problem with – the thing is with me is like – the, a lot of the stuff I was watching, <clears throat> you know, with the family stuff, it's like, what is that? Like, why am I watching this again? Like, mm -hmm. it literally makes no sense to watch a lot of those people's videos. Like, zero. At least mine's like cool things you do with the kids, like stuff that you would do on your own, workout routines that we would do, like that are, that are going to come out. Um, I'll uh, hook you guys up with some hikes. Some, some hikes? Oh, this, yeah, we uh, went. Yeah. There's a couple cool ones like up in like Sedona and stuff where you can go jump into the water off rocks and like it's safe. You're oh, not cool. gonna hurt the kids will be fine. I don't think the, the little one might not want to no, 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 jump off, one, but, but yeah. your ten year old will definitely jump off a couple of these and, spots. And that's what I'm saying. Like that's the that's cool, the fun stuff. Yeah, the fun stuff that you would do as a family. Like, grab one of my uh grab one of those what the fuck what are those things called? The little <laughs> the little action cameras. I don't oh know yeah, what yeah, the called. GoPros. GoPros. Yeah. Grab one of those. I got a video of me doing front flips off the rocks, like 15 mm -hmm. feet, 20 feet drop. Like, I love that stuff, dude. But those those are a lot. That's what we wanted to do. Right. When we started, we were, uh, we were going to do a hiking channel. Mm -hmm. And we were just not going to say anything on it. We are just going to hike cool trails and just put them up and put then speed them up if yep. you want to. or Just because we thought that would be cool for people that are See, stuck in an office. or And it is. It's good, like, it's good to stick into a niche, you know. But I was like, we're kind of like, we kind of do a lot of stuff. Like my family, you know, like my wife's an IFBB pro. She's like mm -hmm. a pers uh, certified personal trainer too. And then we own businesses and then we're starting another one. Oh, you got a business? Yeah. Oh. Uh. What's that? What? <laughs> you got a we got a couple. Well, we're doing another thing too. We're going to start getting real estate. Um, so we do a lot of just random things. Like, And then we work out. 
Right. You know, we got two kids. Like, so we just do everything. And then, you know, um, um, I know they're pressuring me to coach this football, this football team right now. So, we, I mean, we just do everything under the sun. You coach the football team? I don't know. Yeah, I did. I did like a couple seasons ago, and I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to coach. Uh, How do you this get roped season. into that? Somebody approach you? I don't know. The moms, you know, the moms are like, Jamel, you play football, you coach. Your son plays, though. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he right. plays. Okay. Yeah, that so they're sense. like, they wanted me to. Well, coach it's in your me. blood too. Your dad was a coach. Yeah, so. but it's it's hard doing the coaching thing and then doing everything else. Like my dad was a coach. Like that's what he was. Like right. when people saw him outside of out of uh, school and stuff. They would call him coach. Like if we were at the mall, coach. If you're at the grocery store, coach. So you'd be at church, coach. Well, yeah, and you guys yeah. got, I mean, dude, how many, you got a lot of pools. Yeah, we got a lot you of You own a large, large pool service company yeah. in Phoenix. So if anybody ever needs pool service out here in Phoenix, Arizona. In the West, ba- West Valley. West Valley. West Valley, yeah. West Valley out by me. <laughs> Pink Dolphin. Yeah. One of the best trucks driving around town. I love those trucks. So. Yeah. And then. And yeah, dude, and then that's busy. Doing... That's busy work, though. That like is. running a business yeah. and then doing all the stuff with the kids and the family and then I'm the telling... show. Like that's. The show that we're doing. Yeah. That's why I was like. That's why I was it like... takes time to think about that yeah, stuff, too. Like, I... hey, what are we going to do today? And that's why I was trying to tell. You know, that's why I was like, man, but we should we should start this show. And uh, and people should watch it. Like, it's good because it's like it's just ran... it's it's really what we do. You know what I mean? Like what we really do. And. And so it's not like a bunch of just like made up stuff that's like crazy, you know. And then our kids and like how to like um, put them in the show, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like things that they like to do. And we're gonna get better and better as time goes on. But that's why we started because because like I watched so many people's videos and I'm like, what are y'all doing in this show again? Mm-hmm. Oh, they only have like babies. And I'm like, okay, what's the baby doing in the show? Like, what's he doing? Like just smiling or when you know you're what I mean? ADHD like you or like I. When you get into something like this, or yeah. whether it be shoes a few years ago for me, or whatever it is, mm-hmm. when I get into something, I get into it, and yeah. I, like I spent hours and I was up last night in here until probably midnight, just kind of messing with the pictures, and like I try to do a bunch of different little things like that, just so that it's, you know, because I get obsessed with it. Well, like, I'm we'll obsessed tell you this. with being like, better. Like, just don't sell yourself short in life. That's what I was like, man. You know. I, the family thing is the roughest part, you know, um, but every, you know, you know, cause that's, you know, you always want to make sure they're good, you know? Yeah. But like, you know, do other things that make you happy in life. You know, that's what I was like, you know, that's why I was like, man, we should just do a whole bunch of stuff and see what sticks, you know? Cause you might run into something that you just never thought was going to be great. And, and you love it now, you know, like you're, you're just like, you know, you have a positive outlook on life after like it's just it's just different like because pe- people don't do enough you know like people don't do enough things that they that make them happy you know mm-hmm. you only have once that's why I always try to tell people I'm like you only get one go around on this ride you know that's it yeah after that yo that's it that's you all can't you can't buy your time back no nah, you that's, never can get it back and you never and then and 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 then you might as well do whatever you know because you know a lot of people are going to criticize you but who cares. Nobody really cares if they criticize. Like, think about it. You should never care if somebody criticizes you. It doesn't really matter. You're not like the president of the United I States. I like it because you it means you're mean? paying attention. Well, yeah, you know what I mean? Well, you're yeah, looking. Yeah, you're, you're paying looking. attention. If you have the time to criticize me, that means you took time to watch, Mars. analyze, and now you have and feedback. digested and everything. Absolutely. Yes. Go yeah. ahead and give me the feedback. Yes. I'm not going to probably follow it, mm-hmm. but I take it into consideration. Right, right. Because if you took enough time to do it, and you're not just being a hater and hitting me with mm-hmm. some generic bullshit... I'll listen because I get, I mean, no, you but you just do whatever that. though. That's what I'm saying. Like, you still need to do whatever, whatever you, you like, just got to be the yeah. best you. Yeah. Because remember, you can only the be people you. around you. Yeah. And if people like you, then they'll, they'll, you know, and I was like, because the like real you. people sing in your praise when you're going to be gone with the real people around you. And <laughs> right. if you do your best to be the best yeah. you, you will impact them no matter, yeah, no what, matter it what it is. is yeah. like, you won't even have to try to impact them. Mm-hmm. What you do being yourself. Mm-hmm. And being a good person will impact them. Yeah, you can't you can't force people to go one way and all that stuff and force people to like you. People are either they are gonna like you or they just don't like you or whatever it is. A know? lot of that is them not liking themselves, man. There's a yeah. problem there. Like if you don't like me and I'm doing shit that like would cause a reason for you mm-hmm. not to like me, like if you don't like me because I do the show, mm-hmm. well that's completely ridiculous because you don't have to watch the show. Mm-hmm. Like and I'm not making you watch it and I'm not sending it to you every week. You don't like me because I have the show. Maybe you don't like you because I have the show. Oh, it's yeah. not me 
because I'm not saying anything about you. Like there, that happens a lot every day. You know, people, people look at your job or I'm, what you I'm drive, you. and they're like, "It must be nice." And yeah, I used to get that first time I got a brand new crotch rocket. Guys would be like, "Must be nice, mommy bought you a bike." Like, have you met how poor we are? Like I bought my own bike. <laughs> it's like, crazy though. You feel me? Yeah. I'd be like, I'm that one kid that would have been like, "Hey, tell your mom to buy me a bike though." That's what I would be like. Hey. <laughs> I've been like, just call yeah, her, bro. Just like, let her know. You know what I mean? Sign, like I wouldn't be hating. Dog. I just want it. Yeah. You feel me? Like, I never get why people do that nah. hate and stuff. Cause I, I'm like, you don't get anything after, like, if you're hating on that, you don't get it. You don't receive it. Like, nobody's like, oh, you're hating? Here you go. Like, well, it's like a defense mechanism. It's like their brain saw the bike and instead of just in their head going, like, damn, I bet he had to work hard. Why for are you going to be bitter, though? That's why I that's never get That's what you're going to do because you know that you're not going to work hard enough to get the bike. So you're just going to make a comment to make yourself feel better. How does that make you feel better? I don't get that. I'd be like, yo, what I need you to do is. Because it ate me up. Because it ate me up. You're you still say, riding around on the bike though. But, but they feel like they got that one little win. That's the internet troll. They just it just went is. from being, oh man, must be nice mom bought you the bike to this movie sucked. It was the worst movie I have ever seen. No, but like, like, think well, about it like this. this you is didn't why, even watch This it. is why I never said that, right? And well, first of all, I wasn't like the, the one that got picked on all the time. So just think about it like this. Like someone would say that to me, right? So they were like, oh, your mom got you a, a nice little bike, right? I'm like, yeah, she did. Your poor ass mom ain't got shit. <laughs> like, well, that would hurt. That, they would hurt. That's how I am now. That would hurt them. That's mm-hmm. why I was like, I never get why people say negative things. Because then like, like one dude says something on the internet to me. And I told him, I was like, well, make sure if you don't read my stuff, make sure you like like the uh like my photo and all this stuff too. Don't be coming over with the hate and not liking my stuff. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you're gonna have to take the time out to read this, I'm gonna need you to press the like button and all that that comes with it. Don't be over here just all oh, just browsing through. No, 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 no. You wanna really do this? You can hate on every photo, but you need to double tap each photo while you go through it. You know what I mean? Cause that's my thing, is like like, cause it's it's just stupid. Cause like, yeah, if you're gonna hate on me, okay, that's fine. Like if you're gonna give me a thumbs down on my uh on my uh YouTube video, make sure you subscribe and make sure you put the notification on so you go hate on every video that comes through that thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't be having you not subscribe. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what the hell? Nah, you gotta subscribe. Yeah, you hate gotta this subscribe. Shit forever, yeah, son. like you gotta subscribe. You gotta be on admission with everybody else through this journey. You feel me? Like, that's why it gets on my nerves. You know what I mean? I hate when people just like, oh, wanna hate here and hate there. I'm like, no, 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 no. Make sure you subscribe to us. You can hate for life. You, you ever know what been mean? with somebody like that, though? Like, hung out with somebody that just like always got negative shit to say about everything? Yeah. And you like, yeah. you feel weird. Yeah. You like, feel you're weird. like, well, I'm like, Damn, bro, you feel like that's how you feel right now? Like that vibration I'm feeling right now? That's you what know you what? feel like? I feel Ooh. odd because I don't know what to do with that. Part. Like, I'm like, oh, I mean, neither anymore. I don't know what. Like, cause, cause I Take think a, about, go, a phantom phone call and get the hell out yeah, of there. That's yeah, that's, I'm like, yo, bro, that's very odd, weird. You know what I mean? But I, but that's, how, that's my mechanism. So, like, I already got a great mechanism when people hate. I'm like, yo. Make sure you subscribe so you can hate on every video, dog. Let me send you this link real quick. Hey, your hate is appreciated. Remember that. I'm not taking you for granted. Your mama might take you for granted. I mean, because that's what I'm saying. That's how you defeat everybody. Because like when you come at them and you're passionate with them, they they don't like that shit. They're like, oh my gosh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it did yeah, work. It did. Yeah, no, it hurts them. It hurts them worse than at the beginning no, of what they said. Didn't work on you. Yeah, I know. Like. But as I'm saying, it hurts worse now for them that they said that because they're like, dang, now he's actually appreciated that I do this, that I took the time of my day. Yeah, I appreciate you wasted that little bit of time of your day for me. I, I do. got that view. That's what I'm saying. I, I actually appreciate that shit. Like, I do. Like, I'm actually happy that you took the time to do that. that like, I hope you bro. take the time out for the rest of your life for me. I hope that. That's great. Get that. Think about that. Somebody did that for you. Not a lot of people would do that shit. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that for you. Like, I'd be like, if I don't like something, I would just not watch it no more. You see what I'm saying? You feel me? <laughs> that's crazy. I'm gonna bump the numbers on the negative. I'm telling you, get, that's called getting the back end right you feel there. Me? That's the back end. Yeah, because because like you know, especially on YouTube, people still gonna. It, that means more views for you still. Uh-huh. That means more uh, sponsorships. You still get paid. People that get hated on the Kardashians have shown you that being hated on it makes you rich. It does because that means more people are watching you. Same with Eminem. Yeah, look at that it, dude. He, everybody, he be, man. He always slips something in there that he knows. Like there's no way uh-huh. the news will not talk about talk this about, yeah. i'm gonna be the parkland shooter in my new song yeah there's no, no way even if the album flops you have to talk about that song it's genius people don't know that it though sucks. and then people would download it more that means more downloads because mm-hmm. of that the negative because i gotta hear it to know yeah, why you to know why yeah, yeah. what are you talking about let me Click listen bait, to it baby. yeah it's, that's it's all it is it's genius it it's is genius. And, and that's why i always try to tell people is like you know what i mean like well 
I was listening to this one dude. Oh, what was it? Um, Gary V. I don't know if you ever yeah, listened to Gary V. Yeah, he talks about that. You know what I mean? Like, um, you do want the hate. You kind of need the negative. That means you're doing something right. And then another guy, um, man, what is his name? Oh, Grant Cardone. I don't know if you see him. He does I don't real think estate. I know him. He does real estate and he's on YouTube, Instagram, all that stuff, right? And he's like, yeah, man, you got to have people hating on you. That's like you. That, it's actually great. It's like It's like you made it. Yeah. I mean, when people hate on you, it's like, I made it. Yeah. yeah you need to hit that threshold before yeah. you really get I, I, You know what I mean? Because now, now you're like somebody. When people don't really watch your stuff, it's like you're just not interesting. You're just boring. You know You triggered mean? the weak. Yeah. Because you if you made I mean? that comment, you're the weak that had If you're doing that well, hate. that's how you know you're doing well when people start hating on your stuff. Yeah. You know? That, I mean, because you are going to start doing well because then you'll start getting paid because the people are watching your stuff. You know? I, I, I'm i telling you. Like, it opened up my eyes. Like, owning a business, right? To like, the life, right? The reason why I'm getting my last thing though, but I'm a, um like when you start looking at stuff on TV, right? Mm-hmm. And and like they'll say, oh, they have backlash on this or backlash on that, and I'm like, who the hell? How did I get backlash on that? Like, who called in for that? You know what I mean? Like, like I feel like they're making this up. Like mm-hmm. they make it up, make like they made up that they got backlash. Like, who did you pay people to to give you backlash? Like, because I'm trying to figure out. Like, remember Peloton? When it came out with the the cycling, oh, yeah, yeah. and they gave the wife, he gave his wife one for Christmas. Yeah, and then the chicks on the View like torched her because she wasn't smiling enough, and she looked like confused yeah. on why she had the present. And and, and then and, the chick even came out and said it was my face. Yeah, and you know what? No, but but, but, hold on, but another people were like, people were like, oh, were they, was the husband calling her fat or blah 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 and this and that, right? And she needs to lose some weight, or and she's already it's skinny. Why would you they were it? like, "All right, our shit ain't selling it? fast enough. Yeah. What do we got to do?" I'm trying to tell you, I think it's the businesses doing that. Probably because is. listen to this. What else were they supposed to do? Is it is it a Christmas gift? It is Christmas. What what were they? They sell bikes. They sell Peloton bikes. What else were they supposed to do on this show? I mean, on that on that. Uh... That's like a rapper getting arrested before his rollout. <laughs> Bro, I've been watching this shit for years, bro. This, and now they do something different. Though. Now they've just been like, okay, let's get him arrested. All right, now, now he's going to have mental health. And then um, maybe a breakup. Let's get him in a fight with hey, Justin not, Bieber. Not, not, not nothing too crazy. Just enough it's to get a, him in and out just, of It's the same thing. Bro, it's crazy. But I've been trying to tell people that. I'm like, yo... Yo, y'all, you know, I was like, yo, y'all, y'all fall into this like stupid trap now. It's like none of this stuff is real anymore. Like, all this is a, a mirage. You know what I mean? You think you see something, but it's really not. Like that Peloton thing was had to be the stupidest thing I ever seen in my life. Yeah, I was like, they, he got a Peloton bike for his wife for Christmas because it's Christmas. What else was he supposed to get? Like, and bro, you know what they should have done? You know how bikes. they should have fixed it? Yeah. Put the fucking price tag on it. No, 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 no. No, put the price tag on no, there because did. that's why she's like, God oh, damn, my husband bought me this $5,000 bike. Like, that yeah. bike ain't cheap. No, it I don't isn't. know how much it really is. No, it's is. expensive as hell. Is but, the TV on there? Like, it's expensive yeah, as hell. Yeah, like, yeah. And it's like hooked all of, yeah, no, no, no. And then there's the mirror. Yeah. Have you seen the mirror? Yeah. Yeah. It's too expensive. Just go to the gym. But, but, but my whole thing is like, they got backlash on that. Like, that's why I was like, life yeah, is, no, was life is funny. Life bullshit. is funny, though. Because, like, yeah, come on. It's a Peloton commercial selling a giving a Peloton bike for Christmas during Christmas. It all makes sense to you me. You want to hear the extreme one? <laughs> what? I don't think Epstein's even dead. Who? Jeffrey Epstein. Oh yeah. No, he ain't even dead. No, he's on an island. No, somewhere. yeah, because the whole the whole shift is we uh he committed suicide, but mm-hmm. what they really want you to worry about is like, oh, he didn't commit suicide. They killed him. Mhm. So you're so focused on if they killed him or he committed suicide, you ain't actually looking for him somewhere getting his face reconstructed <laughs> right now, like fucking Nick Cage and Face Off. Yo, you, he's, yeah, you he's know, turning into John Travolta right, right now. Right now, he's mm-hmm. probably already, yeah, they probably got him masked that's up done. right now. He's already. That's yeah. why the chick that was his right hand chick mm-hmm. that was her father was the one he took over for. Mm-hmm. That's why she ain't touching her. Mm-hmm. She got a kill safe. Mm-hmm. She got kill switch. You go ahead, touch her. Mm-hmm. Everything gonna get aired out. Aired out yeah, but like th- they do it. That's. That's the whole way of the game. You know, time for Trump to get reelected. Republicans are kind of wishy-washy if they want to back him with the impeachment thing. You, you know, know what? You, I got you, bro. What's I'm your favorite thing? What's your favorite thing, Mr. Republican? War? I got you. Boom. Let me blow this guy up. Who's your best buddy? That's really it. I'm, I'm telling you, everything's a mirage. That's, yeah. that's a lie. Everything's a lie. You, you know, but that's... Eddie Bravo. You got to be looking in the other direction, brother. You can't look... <laughs> this is jiu-jitsu. You can't look over here. You got to look over here. <laughs> You're not lying, though. I'm telling you. That's one thing I will tell you. Like I noticed, like when I got older, like all this stuff is fake. Uh-huh. Like everything you think is like, oh my goodness, 
They just shifted all the bullshit from TV to, to the internet. Now. They did. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, and that's, I was like, and, and you know, my thing is like, that's why I was like, oh, we should start a YouTube because ours is cool. Like it's different, you know? I mean, hopefully people appreciate that and they don't appreciate, you know, just have to have the bullshit. Just the make time. sure they like. You know what I mean? You don't have yeah. to appreciate it. Just yeah. like well, and subscribe. subscribe. You don't amazing. even have to like it. You don't have to just like da- it. Just dislike subscribe. it, but subscribe. Just subscribe. And, get, we, and view it. We can have more dislikes, but the yeah. subscribes is crazy. That's how we used to hustle them and yelp in the beginning days. Mm-hmm. Because it was like, oh, you're going to keep burying my uh, <laughs> my positive reviews? All right, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, this is what I want you to yeah, do. Yeah. I want you to write me a zero-star review, yeah, yeah. and you make it the best review you yeah, write. Yeah. Don't put no stars on it. Put one star. Put two right, stars. Right. But everybody's going to read that two-star review, and they they're like, are. where's the negative? Yeah. There is yeah. no negative. Yeah. Yelp caught that shit real quick. Yep. They were like, oh, yeah, no, y'all ain't doing this no more. Because mm-hmm. it's a hustle. It you is. play the game. You want to bury my good ones? I'll, I'll well, play they, your they, game. Well, they're going to do that, and that's why you got to still, you know, yeah, you got to hustle the hustler. You know what I mean? That's, that's why the streaming and all that, they're changing all the algorithm stuff. They are. Do it. We won't know until we know. Right, but they're doing that too. Like, they're doing that, and then they're, they're um, um, now they're, you know, like Instagram is making you pay to get. The famous now, you know what I mean? Like if you want to, oh, yeah. you want to be famous. We could promote your page, you know, but you got to pay for it because they're burying everybody too in that. Like, oh, I know. Putting you where you well, can't. There's where bullshit you just stuff too. Like I can't attach my YouTube video, right? Mm-hmm. Like it shouldn't be that I have to have ten thousand followers to be able to do a swipe up like you do. Yeah, I shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. It should go on my page and say he has fifty original content videos. Mm-hmm. He should be able to upload from YouTube nope. from his page. Yeah, not be able to. not from not from a random video on YouTube that right. I upload my owned like i own those videos they're mine right but you can't do that on you can't do that on facebook right you can't do they don't have a swipe up button on facebook but they do on your when you post stuff you can actually put links in your post and people can click on it and they post right up. and i do so all that's that. what i do like, now too because like i was like but that instagram oh, thing that pissed me off bro like when bro, yours can swipe up and mine can i'm like that's not right yeah instagram they I'm telling you how they work it. They're just trying to make it where you got to. But you're going to tell me you're going to take the likes away, right? I'm going to mm-hmm. take the likes away because we want everybody to feel equal. But then you're going to let Jamel have a swipe up button because you got 10,000 followers. Well, I don't have 10,000. I have a check. That's why. Oh, yeah. You're verified. They're verified. That's why. Because you're an athlete. They verified me in the public. So now that's why. I need to get verified. Yeah, you need to get verified. But it's it's hard to have another. The Keegan. verify is kind of hard to it's get. It's hard to get another. You're better off getting it. Like, yeah. bro, you're the only one in the, the world. world. Like, yeah, they're, 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 you should, I should have a check. I'm the only one in the world. Check that shit off. That's bro. it. But but yeah, that's that's why I have mine. But um, yeah, y'all check that out. I mean, it, it's good. I, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna get big too. I do. I will tell you that. Well, I'm supporting you guys. I've watched all your videos. I've liked them all. I might dislike a few just to, you know, bump the numbers a little bit. as long as you subscribe. I've I've been subscribed. As long as you subscribe. I I subscribed the first day you guys put one out. You know what's been hard for me, though, um, with a lot of stuff is, um, you know, if you're like somebody, like quote unquote somebody, I think that's actually difficult. Because a lot of people don't won't subscribe to things. Or I see normal, regular, average Joes. They'll have more than me. Mm-hmm. But And their stuff's not any, like, their content's not better. They don't have anything on their thing. It's any, cross-promotion. You know what I mean? That's the real trick to it, man. Cross-promotion. Or you have to have a, a just a straight niche. And yeah. you stay right you in, stay that right in that pocket. I don't like that. Because I, I'm so ADHD that I got to be outside the outside pocket. The so the, the the key there is to have people like you, have people mm-hmm. like Jared Gabriel, have people like uh, Damien Tragedy, the artist. All these people that have fifteen hundred thousand, yep. you know, mm-hmm. you know, fifteen hundred mm-hmm. Instagram followers. All these other Million, things, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. and then they put it out on their page. Yep. Like that dude's got a album coming out. We're gonna get it right before his album comes out. Not for me. So that I can give him the video and say, hey, put it on your page, promote it no, however you, you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. Here's whatever clips you want from it. But that was the whole goal is to just kind of cross promote to the point where like we're just kind of tacking all over. And I want to start getting comedians that come to town. Well, we're Same gonna idea. Cross, we're going to cross promotion on our, our YouTube. You know what I mean? Like we, we already got a couple of people that come in our YouTube. Like our, you see my cousin, the last this last one. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're big on that. I think my, that's what I said. I think mine's going to blow up 10 times faster. Or not 10 times faster, but bigger than everybody's because I don't mind everybody. I don't. I like having people. I like having people around me, right? Well, and so, once you get good, yeah. Like once you get to the point where you're like, dude, these are like, yeah. You know when you make a good one too. Yeah. Oh yeah. And when you do, like, 
then you're not as like no, no, you but reach out I'm... to some of those people that you might not reach out with right. the first ones. Right. Like some of my first podcasts, I'm not gonna call you and be like, "Hey Jamal, you gotta listen to these podcasts, bro. They're the best." Yeah. Because they suck. They don't really need they to be funny, but, but they the thing suck. Is, see, people think about like their stuff sucks. I'm telling you, if you go turn on YouTube, you will find people with five million subscribers. And what in the world are we talking about in this video? How like, doll. Yeah, like it's, it's it blows your mind. I'm telling you. Like, so you could just do whatever, and if you're just good at doing whatever, you're gonna get, you're just gonna get, like, like the Breakfast Club, right? They do the pod, mm-hmm. like, they basically have, like, a, what is it, a radio station, yep. radio, and then, radio. but it's basically like, you know, cameras and stuff too. The thing is, is they get everybody in, they get, they get all the people cool stuff. The reason why, like, um, I even still watch it. It's like the Birdman one. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll put some respect on my name. Some respect on my name. I'll treat you all Takashi's though. Takashi's was in, great in Takashi's, too. Takashi's, but but they didn't say nothing. Or Kodak when Kodak showed up with a mask on. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. I could do this all you day. You feel me? Yeah. Like yeah. Like they didn't say nothing. They don't have a clip of them saying something that went viral. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's all the people that been Only in shit there. that ever clips up for them is when they're mean to each other or they say some gay shit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm yeah. not saying like right, right. Like, but, no, but like yeah, no, yeah, yeah. literally gay like. They say something that comes off homosexual, right? And everybody's like, "What? Do you yeah. didn't think about that before you said it? Like, pause at least after right. you say that shit." But they just have good questions, and um, it's really the people that they put on their show, and and that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't really have to be that good. Like, people mm-hmm. make it seem like you you have to be uh, nowadays because of social media and stuff. You don't have to be good. You have to be entertaining. You know what I mean? You y'all, just have to be y'all entertaining are funny. To watch. Though. You don't y'all have to be. Funny. You're funny. You know. You don't have that to be helps. like. Oh man, I gotta be entertained. I gotta be so good at this part and this. No, 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 no. But you're animated here. too, though, and the, that's the same thing I get a lot from people. Mm-hmm. Is that like just the way I speak and my yeah. mannerisms and how I handle myself is like I'm animated yeah. all the time. Like it's, you've seen me in a branch, you've seen me yeah. anywhere. You see me, I'm the same person. Same it don't person. matter who's standing there. I'm gonna be that person. I'm probably more calm on the podcast yeah. than I am when we're stuck outside this outside, room. Yeah. But that's the thing, like, same thing with you. Like, the day we met mm-hmm. a couple years ago, it was inst- within an hour, it was like, I'd known you. I felt like I'd Forever, known you for yeah. a while. Like, we were yeah. having a conversation about stuff. Like, I was like, oh my but God. But that's, that's another reason why I'm telling you, I, I think I'm going to. Your page will do well because of that yeah. natural cadence that yeah. you guys have being a family. It's yeah, not forced. It's, yeah, it's not forced. And I think, you know, that's why I think they'll do, you know, and I like to tell myself I'm going to do great. You know what I mean? Because in football, that's that's the thing about when you play sports. You got to tell yourself that you're the best. You got to tell mm-hmm. yourself. You can't, you can't just because nobody's going to tell it for you. You know what I mean? And, and if some people do or some people will just hate on you. So you every day is like a constant um um, congratulating yourself because you have to. That's how you keep that drive, that driven in you. You know right. what I mean? You got to say you're the best. You know, at doing the podcast. So you get yeah. up the next day to do the podcast. You know what I mean? You can't. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't. I know I'm beat up yourself. You know, ain't no Bernie doing it and, like ain't this. Ain't nobody doing them like this. You know, ain't nobody. So we, we done burn their ears <laughs> yeah. for uh, over two hours and ten minutes already. So this okay. might be the longest podcast I've done so far. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Any plugs? You got some plugs? Some plugs? What is plugs? Like, what you, what's your business? Your, your, <laughs> nah, if, you, if that shit was plugs, I'd be calling the doc. Cause hey, you know people legit. think these would be like uh, weed? You know people fake. think this is weed? Nah, I know you love it. I said, oh, Lord, people weed think don't my hair. hold like that, bro. Yo. Weed no, falls. People thought my hair was weed. I was like, bro, I'm... Why would I be walking around with hair in my hair? Like that's cool, bro. That's, hell no, that's look not like cool. future, bro. Bro, no, no. I mean, yes, but no. Yes, but no. You gotta go. Th- everybody that mm-hmm. knows, everybody that has dreads knows you gotta work. You gotta go through the process. And his look good. You know, what I mean, you gotta go through the process. Yeah. You cannot sit there and just put some. Put some weed. That, that's so disrespectful to do. That's disrespectful for people that got dreads. <laughs> that really is. There's a process that. They, do you know how long? I mean, if you see back my pictures, they were little nubs. And then oh they yeah, got, like, I, I yo, this is a freaking. Nigga, you have a, you have an ugly stage. Like in um, when you do dreads, like you you go, you go through a little process where they're like like little like just like little roots coming out. You know what I mean? Like they're not really doing anything. Can't really put them back. They're just like everywhere. And they're like one six this way, left right. You know what I mean? Like you gotta go through that no, process. I don't, but, but I I'm wanted just trying to, to at tell a certain you. point. I tried and I did want to know, but my hair, yes. you know. So that's my I last t- thing. I tried to cinch one up and it just come out. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> that's my last thing though. My my uh, hair is real though. So. His hair is real. Yeah. Go check out, is it Hanging with the Flemings? Yep. Hanging, Hanging with, with the Flemings on YouTube. I'll post the links. Subscribe, like, dislike, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you need pool service in uh, West Valley, Pink Dolphin's the one. Mm-hmm. And uh, thank you for listening to the Birdie Dyke Podcast. This has been a good one, man. So peace out. Peace out.